Good evening and welcome back to Vets Play D and D right here on whatever platform you're watching it on. I'm your DM, Brandon. Tonight we are down several of our heavy hitters, but we'll make do. Uh, directly below me, usually you would see the rogue Draven and Tiri, uh, played by Milo. He will be joining us here in a little while. Uh, and then you'll see the other rogue, Endra Arethi, uh, played by Liv. She is not able to join us tonight. I will be stepping in and playing the role of Endra. Going around counterclockwise, uh, Alex is not joining us because, well, Urgrim is dead. Victor will not be joining us tonight, but his uh, his character, the Wizard Horchata, will be played by Jordan, who is also playing the monk Regal Tetheala. Down below Regal, you see our cleric Aurora, played by Jesse the Bunny. And then directly... Are those more cat bunny ears. ears or cat ears? Those are cat that, that's ears. That's cat ears. <laughs> I don't know my animals. Okay? What bunny have you been looking at? Look, so, it's yeah. not like I'm a biologist, all right? I mean... Hey, think, cell think biology. You're, you're going to be a PA. It's, not a I study that. cell biology, not like actual like animals. Who cares? And then, of course, we have Hunter playing the fighter bulk Ripley. When last we met, our brave companions had uh, worked their way through several portions of this dank and actually quite beautiful um, mausoleum, crypt, what's the word I'm thinking of? I think mausoleum is what you're going with. It, wasn't crypt? It? Uh, Catacomb. Hall of the Dead? Yeah. Sorry, my TBI was strong there. Anyway, uh, catacombs. They found the body of Professor Guabin Schwartz's assistant had been drained of life. And, and lover. And his lover, yes. They found the body, they found the book, and they found a gem of mysterious origin. And uh, I believe Regal Tetheala was the one who scoops that up very gingerly into a vial. Yep. Everything. Fantastic. Uh, and then on their way out of the catacombs, suddenly everything went black and someone began to attack our heroes. Well, it was soon revealed that Draven and Tiri was a traitor, the traitor in their midst, and was out for the book and blood. While he offered an exchange, the party resoundingly uh, shot it down, and by the party I mean Regal, shot down the opportunity for parlay, and they continued to battle. When last we, when we had last left off, Draven was looking kind of hurt, and so were several other people. That puts us at the top of the round with Aurora. What do you do? Um, sorry, I should have asked about this sooner. Uh, what are we supposed to see in Roll20? Because I just see all, well, I just see my character. It's not all black, the map, but it's pretty dark and I can't see anybody else. Let's see what's wrong with your character. Same here. Same there, you? Yeah. Everybody? That shit's fine. Alright, so I will kill... A couple of people... Aurora, you should see... Not even your character anymore. Yep. Did that fix it? No. Do you want me to re uh, restart? Yes, please, the refresh. Website? Okay. Refresh the Bulk, we're doing the same thing for you. Did that fix it? I'm alive. And can you see the rest of the everything? Yep. Fantastic. Uh -oh. Oh. Mine's still bad. It's still, um, like, you can see the map, but it's dark. It's like just black and great um but i can't see any tokens interesting love technical glitches let's yeah, see so sorry about this i should have you handed should... my map over to where we were before starting let's reassign your token again <sighs> it's good now all right somehow your token had gotten unassigned but you should be square uh... All right. All right, now what do you do, friend? Yeah, I'm gonna 
take another crossbow stab at uh, Draven. All right, roll to hit. Ooh. That uh, that might hit. It's starting the game off strong. Okay. Or will it? Because none of us actually know the true armor class of Draven. I know. I still don't know if he's supposed to die or not. <laughs> I'm so confused. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, point, yes. <laughs> Uh, your crossbow bolt goes arcing out and stabs him in the uh, in the thigh, causing him to limp just a little bit. Got Doris anything else for us? Herself. Uh, nope. That is all. All right, then Regal. Oh yay! Finally, um, I'm ready to murder. Finally, um, we just started. I know, but it feels like it's been forever. Ah. Uh, um. So I'm just going to move over to Draven, and I'm going to punch him in the face again. Roll hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold That's on. My, a good start. My chat disappeared, but I see it. Is that a nat 20? Yeah, it's a crit. All right. Give me just and one. also, it's a good crit. I somehow popped out my chat and I can't get it to show now. So, uh, give me two seconds through. Tonight is the uh, technical issue episode. All good. Sometimes it's what we need to have happen. I feel like Regal was waiting all week to just punch Draven and then you hit him with a nat 20 <laughs> right yeah, off the bat. Yeah, and, and then I just get told to fuck off. The 28 misses. I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like 20 damage. What else? Um, well, I get to do two attacks each yes, turn, you do. so I'm gonna punch him in the face again. Do it. Oh, maybe not. Uh, nope. But the first one, the first one rocked him. Yeah. Fuck, I'm out of key points. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess that's all that I can... Here, hold on a second. I just want to make sure I'm reading this right, because my brain doesn't work all the time. Hmm. So technically, my second attack is the—that's my bonus action in that in this instance. If I don't use a key point, right? You have multi attack, or not multi attack, but two two weapon fighting technically. Oh, okay, you're using two weapon fighting for it. I thought. Aha! There he is. It says attacks per action is two. Right. That's so get. that's not your bonus action. It's as an action, you have two attacks. Okay, so could I use my bonus action of unarmed strike? Absolutely. Um, cool, so I'm just gonna try and punch him in the face again. Does 17 hit? It does not. I'm very saddened, but I'm happy with that first one, which I critted. Okay. Yeah, that was a big hit. It's a. Uh... He definitely looks like uh, his nose is definitely a little squished and kind of flattened. <clears throat> Good. All right, and then you follow up with Horchata. Oh shit, really? This is amazing. I can't move him, um, so I might not need to though. Well, I will give you the ability to do so. I'll assuming that we're to take that away later. Yeah, assuming that he has been keeping ideas of his spells. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is, well, once I can move Horchata, that is. You should be able to. Nope, let me refresh. We all know how good roll 20 is. Especially on days where we need it to be like perfect, we just know that that's not how it rolls. Indeed. Nah. Okay, let me see. Oh God, it's having a freaking seizure. There we go. I can do it. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna walk right up to him, and uh, when you when you think of a cone for a range, would uh, Regal be in a cone range? Yes. Uh. It's any. It's anything in the. No, it uh, starts in Draven Square, and then 
cones out. Yeah, so it would be, this is the tip of the cone, and then it would be these three. Ah, I see what you're doing here. Burning hands! <laughs> so, oh, I thought uh, you were, never mind, yeah. Why did it do it again? It keeps popping my chat out. <laughs> and I don't know how to put it back, like redock it. That's okay, whatever. Um, all right, Draven. Don't know if you're with us. I'll go ahead and... Uh, oh, perfect. Draven, can you make a dexterity saving throw? Yeah, I don't have my character sheet up. What physical die do I roll? It'd be a no, d20 no, plus, uh, for you, it's plus nine. Excellent. I think you'll be okay. Just don't roll a three. Worse. No. <laughs> I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you take the blast full in the face. Hey. Ugh, hey. oh, that hurts. The lungs are a little seared shut, I think. Good. That's what I wanted. Have a um, breathing. We call that nice. inhalation burns. Yeah, no, they're real fun. <laughs> now... If I remember correctly, excuse me, Horchata had utilized Dragon's Breath in the previous turn, right? Yes, he has it prepared, so as a bonus action, you can cast Dragon's Breath. I'm Dragon Breath in him. I can't tell. I think that's damage. Um, let me read it, because we're definitely missing something here. Yeah. Uh, DC of 15, dex. Dex save. All right. Draven, you got to do better this time. I do. I really do. Uh, Jeromethy. Jeromethy. Uh, Jordan has... Has Jordan gotten less ADD, or does Regal Tethala run off? What would you say, Regal? Is your, is your uh, master more or less ADD than before? Neither. Okay. Just as ADD as ever. Apparently, it's, your ADD is Jeremothy's fault. I think I know who this is. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to go on the Twitch TV and see what the hell their, their name is. Indeed. Anyway, Draven, what do we got? I rolled a 10 for a 19. So you successfully dodge and take half the damage. Thank God. All right, what else do you have for us, Horchata Skinny Bottom, the imposter? Uh, well, that's all that I have, I suppose. Mama! And I'll end my turn. <laughs> that was beautiful. I would like you to have inspiration for playing Horchata so well. Thank you. Does Horchata get it, or do I get it? You, you, as, uh, you can, can choose which to... character sheet you would like it on. All right. I'll, I'll put it on Regal just because he has a tendency to need it more. There you go. Bulk Ripley, talk to me. Shit. Yep, I definitely know who it is after that emoji. Bulk saw how... I know. Um, Bulk saw how well that Regal punched uh, <laughs> the other guy, and so he's going to try to one-up that one. I saw him punch hard. I saw him punch hard. I want to punch harder. Oh, no, I didn't punch harder. You didn't punch harder. You, uh, try you tried to punch, but it was so hard that it wasn't accurate. Oh no. Rip. That one Good looks idea. like it lands a blow. Oh god, that that so good. And it deals some damage. Uh I'm gonna grapple. Alright. Draven. Go ahead and roll either athletics or acrobatics, whichever is better, and try to break 18. Twenty-six. Not Do you 18. happen to know what my uh, acrobatics proficiency is? I'm looking, but I can't. I'm having trouble pulling up our um, <clears throat> character sheet. Sure, absolutely. Uh, it's a plus nine. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm good then with another ten. All right, he's able to deftly uh, slide out of your grapple. No, you have a 26. He has a 26, man. 
What? 26. Yeah, he rolled an 18, but he has 26 after his modifier. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got me then. <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> he's got me. He got you. Got me. <laughs> I grab him real tight. Hey, Alt Five, welcome back. You grab him real tight. You give him a big love. I'm real fun. All right. What else you got for us? Um. Yeah, that's about it. All right. That brings us to Endra. Endra is still at the top of that uh, pillar. She is going to aim her uh, bow at Draven. And she's going to fire at him. And she hits. Man, this guy's just getting messed up. Dealing him a whopping Good. five damage. If he hasn't done this last week, this would already be over. <laughs> it wouldn't be here, though, in my cowl. <laughs> He looked very dapper. He wouldn't have had to rush over from class. I like the shadow that it makes on your cheekbones. Oh, damn. All right, and that's all Endra has, which brings us down to Draven. Oh, dear. Well, I've recently been grappled, and I'm not not super pleased about that. I'm grappled. So. I'm gonna do uh, do what I can about that. I imagine it's that same roll that we just did, only hopefully higher this time. Yes. Excellent, excellent. I'm almost, I've almost got the thing up. Whatever. We've got a 17. It's like. So with your plus nine, that brings you to 26. All right, so he's trying to break free from your grapple. Hunter, I'm sorry, Bull sorry. Ripley. That's sorry, gonna need an athletics check to be bigger than 26. Mm. Tall order. Close, but no cigar. So, so close. Rip, he slipped right out. Well, there we go. He uh, He's a wily one. All right, Draven, you slip free. Okay, so I'm going to distance myself a little bit, right? Uh, hypothetically, if we give me half a minute, I can actually do that with my token. <laughs> Sorry, I've been frantically trying to pull everything up since we started. <laughs> like, oh, no, I it's jumped in prematurely. Totally and then fine. my turn came up. <clears throat> uh, this is fine. Oh no, Jeremothy is leaving. Damn it! Oh, no, know. you don't have to leave. Homework can wait. We're all ignoring our homework. That is that is one hundred percent true. I think I would have gotten at least one more point on my OCAM exam if I had studied instead of played. But my professor told us that if we got forty percent, we did good. So I'm just waiting to see how it comes back. That sounds like it's going to be a brutal exam. It was. It was awful. But uh, we're not here to talk about organic chemistry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Back to this. So I break free from uh, Bulk Ripley. His face looks about like that. He's very not thrilled to have been eluded by the by the rogue once again, the wily rogue. Uh, and I'm going to initiate some dialogue, try to talk to these guys, because uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, it might be desperation, but uh, Draven's looking a little a little worse for wear. So, to no one in particular, as I am basically surrounded by enemies, I say, you don't understand the power of that book. What's in the book? Give it to me. What's in the book? Yeah. What's in the book? All right, write that down for Jesse. Will you take titles tonight? I think what's in the book should be the first. Got it. Thank you. All right. Somebody well, no one. So what's in the book? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked what was in it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh. What's in the book? Oh. <laughs> uh, let's try this. Monk, hand it over. 
and then maybe I'll tell you. Nope. It's a hard no. But I want to know. You guys suck. Nobody wants to give me this book. No, because you killed somebody before you tried to get I it. I thought he had the book. <laughs> if well, you let me stab you, I'll uh, let you go. That's awkward. I wish things had turned out differently. Maybe in time you'll see reason. Am I lagging behind everyone? I'm sorry, it seems like you're lagging a little bit. What? <laughs> uh, oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, I say I wish things had turned out differently. Maybe next time. And with that, he casts his hands up and the room goes dark. I hope it went dark for you because it went dark for me. <clears throat> you hear feet slapping across the ground. Are they gooey? <laughs> no, they're actually, you're the only one that can hear them because they're so stealthy. And then you hear the creak of a door and then it's slamming. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, w I wasn't really paying attention, and now I just <laughs> I just click back, and it's just dark again. So, can someone give me a five second synopsis? Did Draven do a Draven thing? Draven did a Draven. Okay. And since oh, no shit. one wanted to talk with him, he took his he picked up his toys and went home. Okay. Both wanted to talk, but Bulk's internet did not let him talk. Oh. <laughs> no. Well, so if if we need to step back just a second, Bulk is welcome to talk. I would be willing to allow Volk to talk. Well, like, lights just went out. They're still out. What you gotta say to the darkness that may or may not contain a Draven. If you let me stab you back, I'll let you go. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, I don't there's know no why response. he would take that because he's already gonna get away. There's no response. You can't see <laughs> him. <laughs> now wait, when Draven asked that question, was it already dark when he asked the monk for uh, no. the book? No, it when you not. declined, then he uh, made it dark. Lights out, and that's when we heard the flippity floppity dippity doppity. Well, it, since we're letting Bulk talk, we haven't heard the flippity floppity bippity boppity yet. It was like oh, that. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Well, then I think no can one I else. Can I ask a question? Of course oh. you can. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no centaur. Um. <laughs> So in midst of all this, I'm gonna ask, wh wh what is the book? Like, why is it so important that you're gonna kill Urgrim over it and attack all of us for it? Going to? He did. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, DM question. Yes. This is before lights out. We're we're <laughs> rewinding for conversation that didn't quickly arise to minds. Okay. So we're turning the lights back on then. Oh no, we don't have to turn the lights back on. But like, uh, just just to clarify. So that the monk doesn't triangulate my position and yes. kill me. <laughs> yes, this conversation would have happened before the lights went out. Since Damn it, Milo. Talk. <laughs> I'm just, I heard well, the gooey feet. We'll figure out and, what that means later. And, my, I mean, you have enough movement that you're going to be able to get out of there. Uh, sure. After the Don't imply where he's going. going so. Skirt. Skirt, skirt. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I was asked this question. Um, and Draven is going to reply. There are forces at work here that you do not understand. My master needs this. But why? <laughs> Does Guavin Schwartz know what's going on? Guavin Schwartz is crying in the corner. <laughs> well, a short question okay. for a small-brained man. Why? How dare you question the ways of Natuk? It sounds like your master's not telling you anything either, and you're you're just kind of going along with it. You may be right. Isn't Natuk dead? Who? That's it. Was that was that Regal asking a question? Rhetorical. <laughs> Regal knows the answer. He didn't receive an answer either. So. <laughs> there you go. Lights out, gooey feet. Okay, lights out, gooey feet. Yeah, Roar's done. Oh. <laughs> well, then you hear the slapping, or the gentle t -t 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 patter of the feet, a door opening and slamming closed. After oh, I heard a door slamming open? 
Yes. Where was that from? Uh, it sounded like it was over in this general direction. Hmm. Interesting. You know what's really good? Hmm. Definitely can't lock that door, because guess who still has the fucking key? The key for the door that wasn't that. The key went to a padlock that would have been on the outside, but didn't get locked because you took the key to ensure that no one could lock it. Yep. Sounds like that door is going to be open here in a moment. Ah, uh, but a padlock can be locked without a key. I think I took the lock as well. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I think the chains. <laughs> No, the chains were left there because oh, we like yeah. we slumped them over. Like you pretend that you've locked the the parking garage, but you really haven't. That's kind of what we did. But I definitely took the key and the lock because I didn't trust Guad and Schwartz to have it out there. I thought he was gonna lock our asses in here. Boy, wouldn't it be really inconvenient if if Draven happened to have a padlock in his pocket? I know he didn't think that far ahead, and neither did you. <laughs> no, we we did though. No, you didn't. There's another a padlock. There's another reason. Oh, did you actually have one? No, no. We, we talked about a way to uh, yeah. devise. I'm yeah. tracking. The doors are still locked for that reason. Excellent. So don't worry. Anyway. So disappointing. All right. And as he takes off, you hear the door slamming shut. After a few moments of hearing nothing but your own breath, the lights come back. Both eyes are closed. <laughs> well, the lights have returned, whether you see them or not. Uh, Regal's going to walk over to Guavin Shorts pretty immediately here and just kind of throw him up against the pillar because he's very small and very light. And he's going to ask him, why does that rogue want this book? What does Nantuk want with this? You should know. Uh, Aren't you a professor? Yeah, yes. I, I keep shaking him while I'm asking Stop! I, I will answer your questions. There's no need for violence. Yes. Natuk, Natuk did retreat to his, his fortress after being wounded, but no one has heard from him since. We all assumed he was dead. Uh, if Natuk is alive or his lieutenants are still enforcing his ways, then, well... They would need this book. Uh, so while should this is we not be giving it to them? Sorry, Hunter. Uh, while this is happening, Bulk's eyes are closed and he's muttering under his breath, listening as hard as he can. Where'd you go, you devil? <laughs> <laughs> that is the most Bulk thing I think I've ever heard, and I'm in a generous mood tonight. Please be inspired. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Now, uh, I believe you were asking Guavin Schwartz a question. I just want more answers. Like, can we use this book to get to the whatever, like, what, if he wants this book, can we barter with him? Can we get something for this? Uh, is there a way for me to be able to kill that rogue since he took my health potion? With all of this going on, you care about a health potion? I shake him a little bit more. <laughs> Stop. Stop. You're giving me shaken professor syndrome. It's not very healthy. Well, you're going to have more of that SPS real soon if you don't give me that damn answer. <laughs> uh, I had to think about the acronym there. <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing at what Milo said. <laughs> um, uh, they would need the book because I, with it, I can translate... Their language. I've spent a long time studying the codes of Natuk, his shorthand, as it were. And if I have the book, this codex, then I can translate what he has written, messages he has sent, instructions he has left. Maybe Where's the codex? The codex is in your hand. It's the book that we just got. The book we came here for. I mean, the book in my backpack, that's definitely not in my hand. Sure, that book. I don't... I'm sorry, it's dark and my eyes are closed. Okay, then what is this? And I hold up the little stone uh, that we had found on the ground, and I just I shake it in front of him. Is it? Is that glowing? Mm, yes. yes, it's red. Yes. I, I would have to consult my texts. Mm, At the library curious. or in this book? Oh, at the college. Yes, my office would probably have the mm, text that we need. Yes. Um, Sounds like you might need people to uh, guard this book. I don't know about the others, but I'm quite free and wouldn't mind guarding this book for, you know, a little, a little gold. 
I will find that road. This so is, I will be there for now. This book is what I need to translate the um, other text that the other heroes, the people who saved me, the text they brought. Yes. Um, Bolt backs up into this pillar and swings around punches it with his eyes closed. <laughs> then he opens one eye and says, yeah, sure, I'm in. God damn it. <clears throat> Andra asks if there is uh, cash involved. Involved in what? Involved in watching the book. Uh, I'm sure a certain retainer could be scraped together in addition to what I've already agreed to pay you. How long will this take you? To translate the text? At least a day, maybe two. It's it's not an extensive text, yes. Okay. Let's do it. Yes, it's... I, uh, I appreciate your interest and willingness to help. Yes, help. Regal, let's, let's go of him dropping him two feet. <laughs> he collapses to the ground. Hello. Just remember, little man, you're paying me in gains. I, I, I am not familiar with the currency gains. Is this foreign? You will be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like both Ripley would have got along really well with Krampus and Santa. <laughs> Truth. Uh, so, uh, what kind of protein powder are you using? What's your uh, pre-workout look like? Snowflakes and death. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to try and push the door open, assuming that it would be unlocked, because naturally that's what I am expecting. As you reach out and touch the door, you, like Bulk Ripley, become shocked. <laughs> God damn it. Yes, it appears that the rogue has placed some sort of enchantment on the doorways. How hard do you have to punch an enchantment to break it? I think time will do. Time shall be the best tincture for this wound. <laughs> yes, tincture. Professor, how hard do I have to punch this to break I don't again? think your brute strength will help here. I've been told that my entire life, and look where it got me. I think, I think waiting a period of an hour or so might break the enchantment. Like if you wanted to heal yourselves for a short while, this might be an appropriate time. Yes. Sure, I'll stare at the door for an hour. <laughs> Bulk wow. eight hours for the door. I'm gonna take a nap. Bulk, you uh, try to strike the door, doors. but you realize that your fist does not, it comes within a very close distance of the door, but doesn't actually touch it. Instead, a, a shimmering field uh, generates or appears where your fist strikes it and shocks you. <laughs> not enough to deal you damage. It's just uncomfortable. He's starting to like the feeling. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every rep I do, it's just like I'm coming. <laughs> Every time I touch the door, I'm just coming and coming. What isn't to like? I'm sure there's like some sort of like shock therapy for like uh, muscle regeneration or something, or like uh... it's like a tens unit. We're gonna yeah. give him some alpha stim real quick. <laughs> uh, so as Bolt continues to strike the door repeatedly, making more and more suggestive noises as he does so. It's not suggestive. <laughs> <laughs> Are they prerogative or pejorative? Words. It's been a long day. Uh, are you making sexy noises? I think that's the question. No. 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 Okay. Regal uh, is. Uh, after a while, Bulk, you realize that it's no longer shocking you. Guys, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Regal just smacks him on the back and says, good job, and pushes the door to open it. Aurora's a little disturbed, but glad that the door's open. Well, we don't know if it's open yet. Um, we'll find out here. Oh, okay. Second or two. I do have magic tattoos, Brandon. Do magic tattoos grant barrier breakers? No. <laughs> okay. I kiss the magic tattoo anyways. It was a good question. Usually st stats attribution or resistances. Yeah. 
All right. As you got, uh, is anybody trying to open the door? Oh, yeah, great. Open. Great. As uh, as you both pull open the door, since two of you are pulling on doors, you each pull open a door. Uh, you realize it's night outside. It's calm. It's quiet. Not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful starlit evening. Full moon, bathing the scenery before you in a pale light. The gentle rolling hills leading up toward uh, town or. Uh, covered in grass and gently swaying in the breeze. Um, and I throw Bob and Schwartz in front of me and say, to the academy, little man. So apparently the town map I gave you, just, do you guys still have the town map in your inventory? Let me check. Because I had it on a map and it's gone. I no, I have my I character <laughs> and that is it. All right, give me just a second to regenerate the town map that you guys can move on. Oh, me, like Deal what with is it. this? Amateur? This it, yes, it's amateur. We're not sponsored. Yet. <laughs> Please, you think we'll ever get sponsored? Not with hey, DMing. Memes can be dreams. I am no Matt Mercer. We will not get a sponsorship. Uh, if you were here, one of those technical difficulty like signs to put up, like what yeah. was that? I'll work on that. We need like one of those technical difficulty signs to like put up and like a little. <laughs> I have a uh, little. Like, hey, intermission things. Sorry to everybody. This uh, this has been a really challenging night. Don't judge oh, us. I going to say this never happens. Oh, no, no. This happens, just not every night. Ah. <clears throat> oh, well, as you guys make your way back into town, uh, it's quiet. It's still... Um, it's peaceful. Guavin Shorts indicates the direction back to the college and uh, suggests you meet him there tomorrow and points you to a local tavern right next to the college um, where he said they will, he will uh, pay your tab for a room or for rooms and for food and drink for the night. Both immediately goes there without a second thought. <laughs> I'll be holding on to the book until then, Professor. But how do you expect me to begin translation without mm, the text? I will stand over you, if you would like. But otherwise, we can start tomorrow. Mm. I'm not giving you the book without me being there. Mm, I don't. Th I don't see any other mm, options. Yes. Mm. Well okay. then. Come to, to the um, college tomorrow and ask one of the um, students, um, workers, <laughs> to uh, bring you to me. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Prepare for all the things so that you don't have to run around tomorrow morning. All right. And as you guys tuck in for the night, uh, I guess we definitely need to get... Uh, I can't talk tonight. I'm sorry. Aurora, is there anything you're trying to do? It's okay. I'm just trying to go to the inn. Okay. Well, well you reach the inn. And uh, as you all settle in um, with dreams. I will take my horse to the inn. Has room. Well, I'm going to order two whole chickens first. Two whole chickens. Mm -hmm. They provide them. Chicken. Do you want them cooked or not? <laughs> cooked? I would like the eggs, though. Okay. Uh, they provide you a dozen eggs and two cooked chickens. Perfect. Aurora's going to get some salmon. Salmon. Uh, they actually just have some fresh salmon they just uh, brought in. So looks We're like it's salmon run time. Oh, well, perfect. Uh, silvers, Atlantic. Like, what? <laughs> salmon we talking here? Uh, they're a variant of coho. Mm. It's a coho. Indeed. <clears throat> Just the kind I like. We're just gonna. Perfect. Okay. Well, uh, after you guys eat, you go to tuck in for the night. Um, your dreams are reviewing everything that you've done up to this point. And as you wake the next morning, you feel more experienced. Almost as if. if you could, If you could quantify, like. I don't know, your life and turn it into like numbers, you would feel like not in years, but like what you've learned you would feel like you just like leveled up but of course we can't quantify things so, you know 
toasted bread. Who's having toasted bread alt five? So guys, take a minute to uh, level yourselves Become up. Become powerful. Yes, and I'll figure out where the heck this map went. It's nowhere. And this is a long rest too, so all of our spell slots. And everything. Yes, everything. Everything. Is everything. You get everything up in this business, Nami. Well, let's see. Do you know if Victor wanted a multi-class or anything, Brandon? You know what? We're just gonna let him level. Um, okay. you, you won't. You should not need it today. I hope. Um, but no, he did not want a multi-class. I'm just not gonna fuck with this stuff. Then. Yeah, we'll just leave it. Yay! I get more key empowered strikes, and I get more unarmored movement, and a Syrian arc strike. <laughs> I think I get a new feat. Don't you already have two? No, now I have two. Where was your other foot before? Feet. I, I know, I'm being a smart Alec. I know. Uh, I just realized after I said that. <laughs> Wait a second. There is my extra attack. Huh. That's weird. What's that? My uh, Syrian arc strike is not. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Immediately after you take act the attack action on your turn, you can spend two key points to cast the Burning Hand spell as a bonus action. You can spend an additional key points to increase the spell's level. One key equal one spell level, up to three. Power! <clears throat> Now I get burning hands. <laughs> Unlimited power. Unlimited. Um, where do you see what you get? Because it looks like I only got Thunderbolt Strike, which just allows me to push someone 10 feet away from me if I use lightning damage. And I think that's all I got. You'll also get more spell slots, I believe. Um, maybe a new spell. Okay. And then everyone needs to make sure they adjust their health. Okay, how do you adjust the health? Or how much is the health going to go up? By one so you're hit. at 40 right now, right? It'll yes. go up by one hit die. Yeah, so whatever <laughs> your hit die is. Oh, so mine's 68, so just add 8 to it? Yes. Yeah, it's your hit die 1d8? Or... Yeah. It's... It is. Yeah. Wait, what's 68? That just means 6 d8s? I mean, yeah, 6 yes. d8s. Okay. So you will have 48 now. And then looking at yours, yeah. So you'll get the Thunderbolt Strike, and then I think that actually so, might okay. be it. I know. I feel like mine's so underwhelming. Well, like what I said, you check I your had? spells. Brandon, what's unoccupied space count as? Any space that is unoccupied? What about unoccupied space is like a cliff? like over the side of a cliff yes it's an unoccupied space so like if i had something that let me move creatures five on an unoccupied space and that space happened to be like a pit of death yes cool 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 <sighs> that does seem a little underwhelming So that's one option. I think so. You could probably, yeah, go into the spells part when you're on that level thing. And all those known spells, I think you can learn a new one of whatever you want. Are you, um, sorry, so I could just add like a new one? Because I know I was limited with like how many spells I could. Yeah, I think you get one new spell, and it can be any level. OK, to add to my current list. Yeah, mm -hmm. When you're looking at your managed okay. spells, it'll tell you like five slash six, meaning you have five selected and you have six total that you can use. That'll tell you how many new spells you can have. You're nine out of ten right now, it says. So that oh, means... okay. So I can learn one more. Yep. And Hi. you can choose, I think, pretty much from anything that's available there. So. Okay. Revivify. That's handy. 
Revivify is a great spell to have. I will bring you back from the brink. What does it do? Um, it's like an art? You can revive somebody within. It's like towards the bottom. However, you have to have a metric craft ton of diamond. You have to have 300 or 500 gold worth of diamond oh, on your person. It's a. Which is what happens a lot in Critical Role. They literally just pack diamonds onto their cleric with Revive of Fun. Yep. Because it's a solid way not to get TK'd. All right. Well, um, for some reason, the map is gone. And I don't have it on this computer because I build it on my other one. Because uh, this is the work computer. Let me... Mr. Horchata, skinny ass bottom. Don't be impossible to reach me. This is. I'm going to take my Horchata to the hotel room. Whoa. Right? Oh. Well, I don't really have to do anything to his spells, I don't think. He just gets undead thralls. <clears throat> oh my god. Brandon. What? He didn't add his additional wizard spell or cantrip formulas. <laughs> he has his optional features manager and he never put those on. <laughs> we'll go through it. We'll figure it out. I'm just gonna put a message on there. There are still yeah. several of you watching us as we're leveling up characters. You guys are the real MVPs. Good news, Bulk is now also a crusher. And that means that oh, I'm smash. my constitution score. When I hit a creature with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, I can move it to five feet of unoccupied space. And when I score a critical hit, <coughs> attack rolls against the creature are made with advantage until the start of my next turn. No big deal or anything. Out of 10, would bulk again. <sighs> 10 of 10 would bulk again. So I can move somebody 10 feet in a turn. Right on. Your character is uh, becoming a little niche, but the niche is really fun. <laughs> All right, when everyone's up, let me know, and we'll uh, move on. Get ready. I am death. I thought that was my job. Daddy Mary's death. Mother, What's that? <laughs> Daddy death? <laughs> oh my gosh, Daddy death. Hello. I like that Milo just exists here, but he's not here at the same time. Yeah, he's doing me a solid by leaving his uh, little square there so I don't have to readjust all the cameras. <clears throat> little square daddy. Little square daddy. Daddy death. Maybe I can get the map done before you guys do. Right. Um, I'm ready, but I don't know for what. Yeah, Milo, I'm I'm, ready I'm dropping something in our chat. Don't worry about it. It's just faster than emailing it to myself. Yeah, no worries. Oh. I mean, you're welcome He's, to look at it. It doesn't hurt. He speaks with muted. Uh, so it looks like Alt-5 just gave us all the D. Hey, thank you for the D. Jesse's like, I didn't consent to that. <laughs> Everyone but Jesse gets the D. I don't want it either. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Hunter, it's uh, not optional. Yeah, you, you don't get an option. Jesse does. Double standards. Well then. Let me get water quickly. Do so. 
Jesse's like, and I'm out. <laughs> yeah, this is a good time to leave. Deuces. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Do, do, do. All right. Depending on how quickly it uploads, you guys might actually have a map. Roll twenty's done that several times, but it's just dropped things off. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I'm just assuming all computers are evil and this is like an you know par for the course type of shit. Oh god, I have so many files open. looking for. So if we ever get a production budget, then I'll actually feel bad about narfing this stuff up. But until then, I have no guilt. I am without shame. For choosing spells, do y'all have like a, I don't know, like a system for choosing them, or do you just kind of choose what you think is most interesting, or do you choose based on the possible like scenarios that we might find ourselves in? It's actually a yeah, really good question. What do you guys? I feel like there's so many to choose from. When I chose like, them, I always like try to make them all work together. So mine was all like trying to control different people, I guess. Okay, so that a, makes sense. There's a couple different schools of thought, right? Um, like when I build a magic wielding character, I always try to think, one, what I want their niche to be, um, unless I want them to just be an all-around wizard that has a little bit of everything. Um, so kind of what, how they would have learned their magic and what they would have focused on while they were learning, and then why would they do that? And so for me, all my characters are very backstory dependent. Um, a lot of people develop them very utilitarian utilitarily where it's like yeah i want him to be able to do these specific things um and then you have like the bulk ripley approach where it's like how can i really specialize and do something really focused right <clears throat> okay so there like there's a lot of answers this. okay because yeah i guess like it, with aurora she's a cleric so i could either just go like completely healer i guess or yeah i guess i have like a, a range of healing but then also storm attack so that's just because of my deity so i'm playing a cleric in a different campaign um and he does a lot of healing but he abhors the undead right uh, anything undead or unclean he just has this like just ridiculous hatred for which is funny because he has no memory and so he doesn't know why um, but anytime they run across something he considers unclean he just loses his mind and so he has some pretty destructive spells but some of them are necromantic spells which is really it stands in complete antithesis with his healing abilities and thoughts and so you're not really limited to just being a healer as a cleric he deals a significant amount of damage and kicks a lot of trash Okay, which is what I would like to do as well. I don't want to just like only heal people because it's like boring, and then I don't know what to well, do with battles. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Alt Five is saying there's a lot of clerics who definitely don't focus on healing. There are some that are necromancers, just focus on raising the dead, and stuff like that. There are some who don't do any healing and they instead like curse things, um, so they can drop curses or buff their allies and stuff. Oh, Very clerical okay. of them. I think in my mind, I was like, just really focus on the whole healing aspect, but like, I don't know. You know, and that is a way to go, yeah. but that can make for a character that's a little bit less fun to play, um, unless you yeah. really <laughs> enjoy that kind of thing. So clerics are somewhat versatile. People just kind of corner them into just being a straight healer. So. Okay. Thanks, Alt-5. Like 
also it does Aurora kind of seems like she's in it for herself, so I guess pick spells that would like <laughs> for that, like things that would only benefit you maybe in certain situations. It can be used outside of combat too, so like just like utility stuff. Indeed. Okay. That's true. I did just pick the aid spell, which would go against. <laughs> well, I don't really know. I also need to figure out Aurora. I mean, she definitely is trying to get some money, but. Illusion's always fun. Illusion? Yeah. It can be. Definitely can be. Yeah, it seems like. Well, first of all, there's a lot of spells to go through. And they all feel like they have potential, but. I feel like I also have a lot of spells that I just never like run into situations where I'm actually using them. Right. Well, and it, that's just it. A lot of them will seem really interesting, and then you actually get into it. You're like, I never use this spell. Why did I take this? Yeah, or like, like I have like ceremony or something. I'm, like, I'm never going to do a ceremony. <laughs> I mean, so the thing is, you can change your prepared spells um, every day. So if you know you're going to need a ceremony, you go sleep, and then the next day you wake up. You have ceremony prepared, and you can go, you know, do the wedding or the burial or whatever. And so, that's the cool thing about being able to change your prepared spells. I like Crown of Madness. Okay, it's a good one. I don't know. I don't know if you can do that one or not, but Crown of Madness. Crown. Crown. Oh. <clears throat> I don't think that clerics can take Crown of Madness. I think that is a warlock Ooh. and maybe sorcerer, sorcerer spell. It might be. All right. Can you guys see the town of Terangaport? Yes. Terrific. Ooh. So I spend all these time making these maps, and so I really want them to be able to be utilized. It looks like a. It can't move anybody but Horchata now, though. <laughs> it looks like Age of Empires or something. It's a step up from Christmas Town. <laughs> Called you out. I mean, I, I like Christmas Town, but wasn't it just like a? <laughs> I don't know. It was a really quick sketch. Yeah. That was part of its charm. It. That was the intent. I liked it. <laughs> All right, Regal, can you move your token now? Yes. It's so much easier when we're just playing on the tabletop and I put down your Lego characters and you can move them around. I want to come into the college. <laughs> well, Why not? so people are still... I think we're still waiting for uh, um, Jesse to finish. I go sell spells. things while she does that? Sure, you can definitely go to the shop. Which, uh... Oh, I think I, I might be done because I... Yeah, I think it might require more time actually like sitting down and thinking of the spell. So okay. I'm good for now and then maybe like next session i might have like some different spells but okay sounds legit um i can't move my character though of course not son of a bitch um of i'm gonna go to not. trinkets baubles oh actually you know what no he's stupid i'm gonna go to out of the fire whoa 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 a little meta there how would you know trinkets baubles is stupid i'm a traveled man uh so that's not trinkets uh, and baubles is it trinket baubles it's trinkets baubles as in baubles that belong to trinket Ah, well, I also know that he typically doesn't carry large amounts of cash on him, and I'm looking to sell. Yep, not meta at all. <laughs> all right. Is I'm a traveled else, man. Does everyone else have access to their tokens to move them and whatnot? Yep. Great. Wolf is going for a jog around the wall. All right. Enjoy your jog. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Regal to sell things. This sounds like a party. I don't know. Let me see if Horchata had anything for selling. Well, let's let... Yeah, nope. We can just let him sell stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know worry. he picked some stuff up. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. I know he talked about picking stuff up. I don't know if he actually put it, it in his inventory. Oh, he has a signet ring. It's in his other possessions. Either way, I'll let him deal with that. All right. We can do that later. <clears throat> All right. So you're going into where? Uh, out of the fire. Out of the fire. All right, as you walk into out of the, it's a standard blacksmith shop, uh, and as you walk in, you see this just behemoth of a man, a giant orc, uh, clad from the uh, waist down in leather breeches, nothing on the waist up, a little bit scarred, missing a chunk of ear. <coughs> hey, I'm Charlie Mike. Goddamn token. <laughs> He's actually Around the fucking run. map. 
<laughs> Sorry, I just I just saw this little blinking and I was like, what the oh. Welcome to Out of the Hi. Fire. I'm Charlie Mike. What can I do for you? Hi, Charlie Mike. I got I got some things I want to sell you. Like what? I got this here great axe, and I just pull up a great axe. Mm. And with with only having two hands, I somehow also pull out two long swords, even though a great axe was definitely held in one. And I say, I want to get these sold first. Uh, what do you think about 50 gold? You said a great axe and how many long swords? Two. Two long swords or short swords? Long swords. Mm. Some asshole has our short swords. Yeah, I'll take 50 for that. Seems like a fair deal. Okay, so hands him over, takes the 50 gold. Um, and then I hold up a signet ring and a necklace. And I say, how about 150 for these? Mm, I don't buy like, jewels. You might want to try trinkets, baubles, or maybe mungos. I think I'll try mungos. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I'll, I'll come back perhaps later, but for now... I will just take my gold and be amongst my way, and I'll just head over to Mungo's. Thanks for visiting out of the fire. What about you, horsewoman? Um, so I definitely did not write down what I took. <laughs> uh, you have two long swords. <laughs> a... I have two long swords, a war, war pick, hammer. and a war hammer. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, okay. And then where did you get the signet? Maybe I didn't get a signet. I think you opted for gold in place of a signet ring. Okay. That sounds about right. So, um, oh, I didn't catch your name. Uh, My name is Mike Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, Mike Charlie. I got two long swords. Mm -hmm. Pulled out the long swords. Uh, what price do you think I can get for these? I can give you twenty-five gold for them. <sighs> See, you just um, you just bought a, a short sword for fifty gold, right? No, I bought two long swords and a and a great axe. <laughs> oh. All of those for 50 or, or, a, or a long sword for 50? Uh, it was the bundle for 50. <laughs> not paying attention. Okay. Um, it was the bundle for 40. <laughs> bundle for 40. Mm. Okay, I'll send you, uh, I'll tr tr sell you the uh, the two long swords for a total of 25 gold. gold. <laughs> 30. 25. Okay. Terrific. You got me. Here what you else go. can uh, I do for you? Yeah, what about a war pick? A war pick? Oh, I haven't seen one of those in a while. Ooh, sounds like you'll um, buy it from me for uh, 60. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, try five. <laughs> I'll give you five gold for it. Five with two zeros after it? 500? <laughs> You're funny. 50? I'll go up to seven. It's a war pick. I can make one in like an hour. And there's not a huge market okay. for them around here. Well, maybe in the future there will be, but for now, I'll sell it for, for seven. Terrific. If you look on your player inventory sheet that your DM provided you, you'd see that the standard <laughs> rate is five gold. Just well, for reference. Just really likes a war pick. Okay. Who? Just for Who reference. <laughs> <laughs> gotta shoot my shot. What about a? I got a war hammer too. Are you in the market for a war hammer? Could always use a good war hammer. Going rate is fifteen gold. Okay. Terrific. I'll, I'll sell it for fifteen. Mom. Thank Delightful. you. Is there anything else I can do for you? <laughs> uh, no, that's all. Have a glorious day. Well, thank you for coming down to the fire. Get lost. Oh. That's pleasant uh, for an order. Both gonna order two more whole chickens. Um, they look a little nervous, but they go prepare a couple of chickens. Would you like anything to drink with your protein? Can I have the eggs? Um, how many eggs would you like, sir? How many of those chickens lay? Uh, not enough for you, it seems. I can probably part with ten eggs. Perfect. Delightful. Uh, and a cup, please. And she brings out a mug with eggs still in the shell. Ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, sir. Perfect. Put it on uh, Globby's tab. Yes. The professor, the good professor told us to take care of you. We'll do so. Your chickens will be out shortly. Perfect. He cracks all the eggs and he drinks them. <laughs> right. 
Mm. Uh, good times. I, are you walking into Mungo's right now, Regal? Yep. As you walk into uh, Mungo's, you see behind the counter a fairly androgynous individual, very thin, about 6'2", um, standing behind the de- at the counter, shoulder-length hair, uh, pointed, lo- uh, not long, but uh, pointed nose, um, looks at you and says, Hi, my name's Pat. Welcome to Mungle's Mystical Magic, Mystical Magic Menagerie. How can I help you? I have things that I want to sell to you, and also inquire of your items upon selling these things. Delightful. What items are you looking to part with? Uh, he holds up two signet rings and a jeweled necklace, and he says, these. Mm, would you mind if I appraise these? Sure, go ahead. Just slide them onto the calendar. Oh, God. Yes. And starts, lo- uh, Pat pulls out a, a looking glass and starts really looking at them. <clears throat> These signet rings look, they bear the sign, or they bear the sigil of the, of the duchy of Taranga. Where did you get these? Found them laying around. Roll deception. Um, he sincerely believes he just found them laying around. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I see. Well, I feel like it is extremely unlikely that rings of these magnitude were just laying around. You seem to truly believe this. <laughs> yes, I do believe what happened is what happened. Mm, the weird, the weird things that happen. Mm, yes, the world. Well, so, sounds like they're worth something. They might have been about a hundred years ago, but now they're just collector's items. To the right buyer, they might be worth something. I can probably take them off your hand for a uh, hundred for the pair of rings and forty for the necklace. Um, I think that necklace is worth a little bit more than that. Take a second look. Hmm. I could probably go up to eighty. How about 200 for those, and I'll buy something from your shop as well. 200 for the necklace, or 200 for all three? All three. Because you said 100 for the two signet rings, and then you went to 80 for the necklace, correct? I can go to 190. That's fine. Terrific. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Um, and then I'm just going to ask him what he has for sale for oh, fun magic Are you items. assuming that, that Pat's a he? I knew that was going to happen. Um, I'm going to ask them what they have for sale for magic items that might be useful to somebody who likes to punch things. Mm, mostly we have arcane focuses, druidic focuses, holy symbols, and a small collection of scrolls, tomes, and study materials for the college. Mm, sounds boring. Maybe I'll come back later. Thanks. Any leaves? Have a nice day. How many people of us are alive, by the way, now? Is it five of us? There are five. Okay. Still in the party. Yeah. Ooh, but, yeah. Pat's voice used to be so much better. I'd forgotten what Pat's voice was from the last time, though. Indubitably. <clears throat> Unfortunate. Uh, Aurora, what are you up to? Um, so, Aurora's. She made her way to the dock zone, and she's kind of meandering around, um, looking at the boats and the ships, um, maybe seeing if any are for sale, or if there's any fixer-uppers. There is a harbor master you could uh, approach and inquire. Oh, really? Indeed. Where is that? You, you see a harbor master that you could approach and talk to. Oh. Well, she- <laughs> We're using the imagination here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to go over to one ship and um, see a, a master. Oh, the harbor master. Yes, you see the a man walking master. around with a, an armful of, of scrolls. Looks very important and very busy checking on several of the ships. Uh, you notice several people refer to him as the harbor master. Oh, perfect. Uh, excuse me, fine, sir. 
Are you a harbor master? I am the harbor master around here. What can I do for you? Yes, um, I'm I'm in the market for a new ship. Um, <laughs> may not have all the funds right now, but I just want to see what might be might be available for the near future because I may have landed a gig that's going to pay um, some sweet sweet gold. And what's a centaur want with a ship? <laughs> a ship. Um, I'll have you know that I am one of the main spice traders um, for Terangaport. However, my my s- sweet SS Lady Luck um, did not receive good luck one day and fell from a storm. So you, I'm in the market for another ship. You were the captain of the Lady Luck? I was. I may not look it. I'm a bit uh, beat up at the moment for some excursions. Hmm. I've heard tales of your exploits. Very interesting. Well, I may have heard talk of a ship being built and a ship being sold. How many sails do you want on the vessel? Three. I think three should do nicely. Aye. Uh, a proper... four. <laughs> a proper schooner, then. Yes. Indeed. Well, <laughs> There happens to be a schooner for sale at the far end of the dock. You'll have to inc- you'll have to ask for Captain Fuzzy Butt. Perfect. I will inquire about that schooner with Captain Fuzzy Butt. Thank you for your time today. Terrific. And he bustles off to go take care of more things. Bulk, what are you up to? Uh, Bulk is going to go confront the professor. Okay. Oh, in that case, poor child. Not about, Regal not about the other thing. It's about something completely different. Regal and Archot are still following. <laughs> All right. The Bulk is walking on the professor. Is there, or into the college. Is there like a receptionist or anything? Uh, as as you actually walk uh, through the gates of the college, you see it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's like this place you once read about called Hogwarts, but totally different. Um, but similar in the fact that there's, you know, walls and spires and, like, great hall type stuff and whatnot. And as you walk in through the main doors, uh, you see four pillars before you as you go up some steps in this long, beautiful hallway uh, leading to an open courtyard, maybe 100 meters uh, down. And as you're walking through the hallway, um, either wall has uh, an assortment of doors. Uh, and in between each door is a different statue of a different uh, mythical hero or scholar. <clears throat> um, after you get about halfway down, a robed attendant, uh, someone wearing pure white robes, walks up. <clears throat> yes, hello. How can I help you today? I need to find Mr. Gwabi, please. Mr. Gwabi. Short Gwabin man. Schwartz. Oh, the Professor Gwabin Schwartz. Absolutely. He told me he was expecting some people. Please, right this way. And as they start leading you uh, toward the courtyard, they start almost in a tour guide voice, like tour guide Barbie, uh, start explaining the history of the college. Uh, this this is the Lyceum Quadrigeminal. The name's a little bit pretentious, but we love it anyway. It consists of four schools. There is the College Arcanum, the College Academ, the College Marshal, and, uh, yeah, Marshall, and the College Bardic. They represent the four different parts of the body, the College Arcanum represents spirit. The College Academ representing the mind. The College Marshal representing the body. And the College Bardic representing the heart. People from all across the land come far and wa- or from far and wide come here to learn about their respective trades. It's a very beautiful thing. And just Who's keeps the biggest going. person in the body school? The biggest person? The biggest. Oh, that'd be Hulk Bipley. God damn it. Hulk Bipley? That sounds a lot like Hulk Ripley. It does, doesn't it? How big is this Hulk Bipley person? Oh, well, I think uh, I think you could, you'd could you have to put on an inch or two more to be like him. Or take a, two in, a couple inches off of him. Quite possibly. Interesting. Indeed. And as as they're uh, as they are leading you through the courtyard, it's a beautiful courtyard. It's uh, got a fountain in the middle and stone benches around the fountain, and all the way around the walls of the courtyard. It's probably sixty meters square. 
uh, bushes and trees and everywhere there's there are individuals lounging and reading and chatting and laughing and eating food and such um, and at at each of the corners of this um, courtyard there is a tower uh, the entrance to a very large tower uh, being leading to four different towers um, and she, uh, the individual says, please wait here for a moment. I will go get Professor Guavenschwartz. And scurries off. While they're doing that, Aurora, what are you up to? Um, organizing. <laughs> what was that, Jordan? <laughs> organizing. Charging my laptop. Um, <laughs> Aurora uh, just walked <clears throat> along the, uh, the docks. Um, and now she's in search for a gentleman, person, that might look like Mr. Fuzzy Bottom to talk to. Uh, you see um, many different people. I mean, the dock is especially busy today. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just do that. And as you're wandering, you're wandering around, you get to a, one of the last ships that is moored here at the docks. And uh, you see a man walking around uh, very tall broad man um looks like he could probably lift a few barrels on his own uh, not quite bulk ripley big but might follow the same diet um and this man has a large fox tail sprouting from the back of his pants ah you look like someone that they'd call fuzzy bottom well yes Hello, yes sir. i do do we do we know each other uh you do not know me <clears throat> or you may have heard of me um Captain of the SS Lady Luck, <laughs> Spice Trader. Can't, um, say I I can't say I recall a Lady Luck. Okay, okay. Maybe you, uh, you know, on the uh, the wrong side of the dock or somewhere else that, yeah, haven't heard of a famous Spice Trader. I'm a busy man. Could you get to the point? Yes. Um, I heard you might have a schooner for sale. Well, I am looking to get out of the business. Me crew and I just ain't getting along, and I'm ready for retirement. This old tale's done wagon for the sea. Oh, so it's your schooner. Aye. And how much How much are you wanting to sell her for? Aye, well, this last will get you through any storm. It would be at least 120,000 gold. 120, but that comes with crew and all. Oh, I already have a fine crew, so... Could I have a discount if you... I don't, if I just 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 want the just want the schooner. I just the vessel would cost you a hundred ten thousand gold. Okay, well I definitely do not have that right now, but I may in the near future. Is there any way you could put it on hold for me? I could put a down deposit on it. Well, we we be having one last run planned. It'll probably be taking us a probably a fortnight. When we come back, if you had the gold, the ship be yours. Okay. Very well. So there's no way I could put a little bit, say... Oh, so close to 300. Say 250 down for at least a couple more days to acquire the rest of the gold. 250 gold? <laughs> yes. For a 110,000 gold vessel? Doesn't seem like but a drop in that bucket. How much does this ship cost? <laughs> 110,000 gold. Jesus fucking Christ. Is it made out of gold? I do not have the gold for this. Why don't I, mean, I uh... Well, I don't have anything to throw in there. Uh, Very well. Really quickly, Meta. Um, Jordan, do you okay. want to say anything about how the people in my... The merchants in my stories usually are? They're pieces of shit. <laughs> ripping me off. They they like oh, to, yeah. they like to highball, they expect bartering. Yeah, don't if you don't barter, them. you're gonna get <laughs> fucked. Okay. Like paying a hundred and ten thousand dollars for a three tail schooner. Yeah, or maybe like gold. counter offer like a thousand gold. <laughs> Five hundred. <laughs> Start low. To... That's true. I tried to barter with the other guy selling my Sometimes it works. And it didn't go well. Well, that's because oh, you were spotty. You were, that's because you offered a ridiculous price. It wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. What if we pick a fucking hole into his 
and ship, and then be like, how about 400? <laughs> Do not try to fight them either. <laughs> hey, it's worked out for me in the past. Uh, if you want to see Hunter have a really bad experience <laughs> with some merchants, go watch previous seasons of D&D Vets Play on YouTube. Uh, Give me that item. Bop, bop. <laughs> was that before or at, that was before you had to go on a punching spree to try to not go to prison, wasn't it? Punching spree happened it shortly after. thereafter. It was after. Was it after? What? Yeah. Yeah, he he had to punch a list of people in the face um to what, pay what off his child? to pay off his debt <laughs> to uh a merchant. I believe. Of he did. And, and one there was, was a child. There was a five year old child, there was a uh woman of the night, there was an old man an old man or old woman. I think and it was both. He uh, went through this uh, rampaging punching spree through <laughs> the capital city lot pick. Almost worked. Almost worked. Almost. But it didn't. <laughs> Close, though. My favorite was you climbing into the, the prostitute's room while she was with a John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, we digress. Back to you, Aurora. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm just going to rewind flashback. a little bit. <laughs> wow, my uh, 110,000. That is a hefty price for a uh, three sailed schooner. She'd be a fine vessel. Look at her. Freshly painted. New tar, new pitch. The sails be new, not even a patch on them. Hmm. I think the uh, I think you might have inflated the price based on all the. Uh, Wonderful memories you have with this Inflated ship. Inflated. I'll tell you. Do you insult my honor, lass? <laughs> Roll no, insight. Mine, no. I um, I'm just saying that there there should be other uh three three sailed schooners that I can get for five hundred, a thousand, and I'd be more than happy to to are go you, with that. Are you five. saying five hundred gold? You'd be lucky to get a <laughs> rowboat for that. I'll do a thousand. A thousand is more than enough for a. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Stop telling her how to play. No, I'm not. T I'm looking up what the typical prices of boats are within D and D. What would this what? fall under as a sailing ship? It is. Yeah, I don't actually know how much this is supposed to be. Uh. Hmm. So I vary my prices from a lot. Of <laughs> Ten thousand. <laughs> I vary my prices a little bit from some of the other stuff in the game. There's there's literally not a boat above 30000 in this. <laughs> Hold on, i got to plug my laptop in. G giving you a hint there, Jesse. Uh-huh. Wait, and sorry. A, a very meta hint. Yeah. But, all, but also, this is like a good point. If you feel like the individual, an NPC, because Brandon can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. He can lie right, through we'll his fucking teeth. We'll see you later at Alt-5. Next week, he'll be a little bit more active. Yeah. Brandon can lie through his teeth the entire time and tell you that a necklace is worth one gold when it's actually, like, the Duchess's necklace worth, you know, a fortune. Use your insight to be able to tell if they're lying to you. Because uh, a person who was a famous ship, like, right person, spice trader, would know if it was freshly painted or had new tar or if the sails were practically brand new. Oh. Or if he was just lying to you and he peed on it before you came there. And he just has a really unhealthy tint to his urine. So can I just roll for insight to see if he's actually telling the truth? Absolutely. Okay. That sounds like a better idea. But also, barter. Use your persuasion. With an 18, you, you uh, have your original suspicion that this man is inflating the plot price confirmed, but you already knew that. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm going to... Let's try persuasion then. Wait, wait. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Wait, before that. Oh, God. Can I... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Can I do um, a roll? Because I don't know how much a ship is supposed to be, and I could, like, Google it, but could I History? just, like, ask... Like, yeah, could you... Uh, like, would it be some sort of check to actually pull from my knowledge how much, like, a ship would actually... Absolutely, like yeah, just do actually... a history check. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, this, is not and this is just for everybody. If you want to do something, just ask Brandon yeah. if you can do it. Don't don't say, don't say try and figure out what role it is. That's my job, right? Your job is just tell me how you want to play. Leave all the mechanics to me, right? You just okay. be free. 
<laughs> Her centaur has a TBI, minus one. <laughs> <laughs> and even with that minus one, you recall that the Lady Luck was a similar size ship, a little bit smaller, but you got it for about 35,000 new. Hmm. Okay, very good. You know, as soon as you take it off the lot, it loses value, so that's why... <laughs> Appreciation! <laughs> Um, okay, so with my insight, I know that he is obviously overcharging me, but for the most part, the ship does look good to go. He It does have, like, the brand new sails, fresh tar. On, on a cursory inspection standing on the dock, it looks pretty darn good. Even the figurehead looks to be well-painted. Okay. Trying to highball you because you're a woman. Probably. I would say trying to highball because she's a horse, but... <laughs> that, that might Only be half. more what it was. I mean, a double disadvantage. A horse and a woman. <laughs> and a woman. <laughs> a woman horse. Don't look a gift woman horse in the mouth. Oh God. Get eleven percent of the hay that other horses get. Don't eat hay. <laughs> Never see their mouth. Okay, I want to talk to Mr. Fuzzy Bottom again. Keep talking. All right. I'll have you know that I bought my own ship that sailed a many fine years, transported hundreds of pounds of spice throughout uh, Tarangoport. I bought her fresh off the lot for th uh, 3500 35000 <laughs> Not 3500 I, I believe that she was attempting to use deception. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure she I'd remembered. Like to... Oh, I thought you said 3500 no. uh, Joey Rubin is informing us that a boat loses a lot of value when it's sold. Joey would Very know. Used. He lives on a boat. There you go. Good to know, Joey. <laughs> Wait, was the okay. meeting all done? The meeting that we skipped out on? Can canceled it. <laughs> anyway, so you're talking to him. Did, are you telling him a 35,000 or 3,500? You can choose whatever number you want to say. I know. I'm seeing if I have any spells to, like, persuade <laughs> <laughs> him. I, I cast Fireball! <laughs> Yeah, just burn the sails real quick. Really pull that value down. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, why not? Let's go 3,500. <laughs> I'm shooting low, so then 3,500. <laughs> now I know you ain't no sailor. You're not going to get any vessel for 3,500 gold. <laughs> oh, did I say 3,500? I meant 35,000. Please roll persuasion to see if I trust that you uh, made a mistake. Okay. Hello, love. Either way, I'm not gonna have this money. Oh god. Mm, an honest mistake, then. I misspeak all the time. You said you were a spice runner before. I was. I. That means you'll be running cargo that's not necessarily spice legal. <laughs> be that so? No, this is just between you and me. Yeah, so I... You keep on the hush. I got. <coughs> well... What if it was just actually spices? Saffron. Could That's be. what I was thinking, cardamom and saffron. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Brandon's just like, why does this woman know so many random things, like cactus areas, specific spices well, that would be utilized? And, cardamom and saffron stuff that... I mean, I cook, so I understand. I'm right there with you. And she eats, like, hay, so she has to have stuff to flavor it. You know, wow. being a vegan. Wow. Oh, I so can, that's why you're I'm a horse very lady? proud of my spice cabinet. <laughs> right. Because none of your <laughs> food has flavor otherwise. Don't say that in basic training. It gets you in trouble. <laughs> All right. Well, I well, if if you be moving what I be moving, let me show you something. Come on board. Ooh. Okay. Can I trust this guy? <laughs> you're for definitely me. about to get tamed and not in a way that's fun. You <laughs> might be horse meat. Only half of her. Can I do a perception check of the boat that I'm about to get on? Well, what are you trying to figure out? Uh, if, you know, he's going to kidnap me or anything. Oh, so of him or the boat? like? Um, what just my general surroundings? So sure. Of him. Okay. Well, I mean, yes. yeah, go ahead and roll insight for to see his kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay. Just a curiosity, Jesse, does your character like salt cubes? <laughs> Sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. Why would I be eating salt? Uh, no, horses like salt as well. Mm -hmm. Oh. Salt yeah. blocks. Hey, 
Yeah, salt blocks. Well, they, they sometimes have those on ships, so I'm thinking he might lure what? you in. <laughs> Got a little bit of a salt block for you. Uh -oh. I'm getting the stink eye. Uh, apparently, I put one of my power tools on the baby's mattress. You bitch. I know. I'm a bad person. Gotta start him early. Gotta start him early. Jesus. Um, <laughs> he, uh, Captain Fuzzy Butt looks earnestly. Yes, that's his name. <laughs> Captain Fuzzy Butt looks uh, earnestly very excited to show you something on the ship, as if he's like. That kid on the playground that has Pokemon cards and finds another kid with Pokemon cards and he wants to share like the experience. He looks like that. Not quite giddy, but pretty close. His crew looks like they're fast at work, uh, stowing sails and um, lashing down, battening hatches. I don't even know what that means, but I'm sure that has something to do with boats since I hear it in all the all the television programs. So. Okay. Well, Roar can appreciate a fine crew. She's always in the market, so she'll go on. <laughs> You well, know, Brandon, it's, it's a really bad thing if they're battening in hatches, just so you know. I have That's no like idea what oh that means. shit moment. They're, practice, they're practicing battening the hatches. That, that's when a storm's about to hit. Oh, okay. They're, they're doing uh, battle drills. Right. A dry uh, run. The, yeah, there you go. A dry, wet run. A wet, dry run. A dry, wet, dry run? A dry they're something. doing a moist oh. run. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the title right there. If you want a moist run. <laughs> anyway, Dad. so Jesse, uh, what were you saying? Um, Aurora's gonna gonna go on the, the ship. Terrific. As you come on board, people, uh, some of the different sailors kind of give you a double take, but by and large, they seem to ignore your presence. The uh, fuzzy butt leads you down um, to the cargo hold. He's like, if he be a a true runner, you you'll be appreciating this. Taps on, taps around the floor until you hear a loud clunk, and he wiggles that board back and forth, and it slides a little bit. And he reaches down and pulls up a handle, and the floor in front of him slowly pops up, and he lifts it up, and there's a, there's a hidden hatch underneath to a second cargo hold. Like this, be why the vessel be worth so much. No inspector will ever be able to find whatever you be smuggling. Is Aurora actually involved in illegal trading, or is that actually just spice? Like, is this a whole, a whole when, misunderstanding? When she said spice, he assumed drugs. Aurora's <laughs> going along with us. Maybe we've broken in the opiates. <laughs> the poppies. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to ask him. Um, this is a uh, fine mystery hatch. I would expect nothing less from a marvelous ship. Uh, may I ask what... What did you use this uh, secret hat to trade? You know, spice trader to spice trader. Right, well, we made runs of different <laughs> herbs from the Republic <laughs> of Luft. <laughs> and and from uh from Midoan, we moved uh many people. Soldiers, I don't do that slave crap. I had to for the uh Revolt in Midowan, we brought in several of the uh, special forces. <laughs> they didn't know what hit them. A very lucrative run. Aye, we've moved treasure for different caliphates and kingdoms. Whatever you need, we've moved it. Mm, so you're a smuggler. I like to consider to myself an independent trader. And now that you've retired, who's, who's taken your spot? Haven't or retired you... yet. I have one last run, and that is why I'm looking for someone to take over the vessel when I'm gone. I nearly have enough to buy the manor out of town. Fine place for retirement. Are uh, you looking for someone to take over the ship? Are you looking for someone to take over your job as well? Uh, since I am the captain, if someone takes over the ship, it would make sense that they're taking over me job. Are you sure, you yes, sailor? Sure. <laughs> Yes, I am. You don't seem to understand Forget how things. these rules work. How the rules are taken on these ships. Oh my god. Forget Jesse things, is Jack say. Sparrow as a fucking centaur. <laughs> You'd be the worst pirate I've ever heard of. <laughs> but you've heard of me. God damn it. <laughs> Can Regal smell any pixie dust in the college? 
Yes. 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 You smelled oh. pixie dust. Okay. It was recently yeah. smuggled in. That's cocaine, by the way. Wolf no, here in, in this world, there's actually it's actually pixie dust. They they sniff it to get high, to fl fly, cocaine. to fly. And what else makes you feel like you fly? Cocaine. Well, Jesse is in the under under bowels of the vessel with the Who? professor or with um Captain Fuzzy Butt. Aurora, not Jesse, you turd. Oh. <clears throat> I used to be the one that got, called everyone else out on it. Now I'm so bad at it. Your TBI is acting up. That's all it is. My BTI is bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Y'all who are at the at the college um, hear just ludicrous stories about people talking about exams that if you got a 40% on, it was considered very good and and uh, all sorts of different tests and stuff. Someone actually runs up and asks if uh, Bulk wants to sign a petition. What's the petition for? Oh, well, see, we want to rename Grander's Hall after Professor Doral Dumbledore. He can't read. That's, I can That's read. okay. We want to rename Gander's Hall after Professor Doris Dumbles, who died saving students from the magical uh, swine boil outbreak. Who was the other guy? Gander's? Yeah. I don't know. Who was stronger? Well, Doris Dumbles happened to save hundreds of people from the swine boil outbreak, so I'd say he was pretty strong. Like, muscular. Who was more muscular? Huh. And he goes over to a statue of Gander, and it's a scrawny, skinny old man. And then there's a story, then he points you to a statue of Doris Dumbles on the other side. Another scrawny, skinny old man. You should name it after someone else. The Hall of Ripley, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, Regal's going to throw a searing, just a searing radiant sunbolt right at their paper clip, whatever the hell they're carrying. Of course you are. Yep, uh, I want it to burn. Their petition goes up in flames. Uh, <clears throat> and they look. Oops. They look very distraught as they're trying, my petitions, and they're trying to pat them out and get the flames to go out. You think at a place that has magic, they'd fireproof things. Weird. How do you fireproof parchment, you turd? How do you waterproof parchment? Magic. Duh. Professor. <laughs> Professor. About yeah, that Re time. Yeah, was just going to yell. <laughs> About that time, the uh, the white uh, the white clad individual comes back, followed by an individual who um, is wearing the same colored robes that Professor Guapin Schwartz was. Uh, a tall, um, slender man with a long hooked nose and uh, short cropped white hair. <clears throat> <sighs> oh no! What do you people want? Guabi, great to see you. That's not Guapin Schwartz. I'm talking to Guabi. Guabi's not there. He's not there. I thought Guabi was there. Oh. No, 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 no. The, the original lackey came back, and then this person oh. in the same robes is what Guabin Shorts was wearing came. Looking for one Guabin Shorts. He Important is currently is. in a meeting with the dean. My name is Professor... Don't care. What? Don't care. I am Professor Jimmy Crocorn. Uh, crack corn, what do you know about muscles? A fair bit. Why do you ask? I gotta build mine. Mm. Do you eat a lot of protein? Two chickens this morning. Nice, fair. And what, eggs. How much do you bench? What, what's the weight system? Uh, lots Patrick. of stones. Many stones. Mm. I can bench you. I don't doubt it. You look like a muscular specimen. I would say go over to the college oh, marshal yeah. and ask for Hulk Bipley, but frankly, I don't care. What's a bench? It's how many benches you can lift. Oh, at least 10. <laughs> As I was saying, Professor Guabin Shorts is currently in a meeting. If you have business, I can take care of it. 
He owes us money. I'll Walk take you to his office. I don't care to handle his business. Aren't you handling his business right now? Not if it has to do with money and you people. I simply don't care. Please follow me. Why would you even come you... up to talk to us? Because I was told by the dean to run block, but I really don't care. Run block? What does that mean? Uh, Guab and shorts. Like, block, like physically blocking somebody? I can block somebody. Oh, dear goodness. This man is the is dean up there? Head. The dean is up at the top with Guab and shorts. Regal They're having a discussion right about some sort of money. Yeah, Regal's just going to head straight up into the dean's office. You don't know where the dean's office is. You literally sit up there and you came from the stairs. Yes, in a large tower that has tons of rooms. Okay, I'm going to assume he's towards the top and I'm just going to start opening doors until I find him. Terrific. Well, he's running around opening doors. What are the rest of you doing? I'm very fast. So you're blocking us. <laughs> no. no, you are a block head. Please follow me. I can take you to Guavin Schwartz's office and you can wait there. I'll just I'll come back later. Fine, fine. Horchata <laughs> will uh assist because he totally would. He'll assist Regal in um trying to ascertain the location. Um generally both of them are going to attempt to suss it out by the smell of a pathetic man. Please roll a perception check. My assumption is that at some point Guavin Shorts got nervous and pissed himself. Why do you ask a student? Because the student is likely to be even more submissive than uh, the dickhead that we're dealing with. You smell a lot of pathetic people. Um, and as you're ducking in and out of different classrooms, there are many people in ah, lecture halls. But regal has specifically sniffed out for the professor before oh you said a specific man you said a pathetic man that's the scent okay uh you don't detect anything immediately but as you're running through uh you do see a sign that points to the dean's office he's nearby <laughs> starts heading that way with horchata all right well they're climbing um, the tower and bulk is doing what now Hulk is searching for the one, the only Hulk, Bipley. Uh, as you're looking around the college, uh, you're directed over to one of the other towers, uh, and you're told that Hulk Bipley's office is at the top. Oh, Hulk's run at the top. All right, get your run on. Well, they're going up towers. Aurora, you are in the vessel with Fuzzy Bottom. I am. Um... Well, Captain Fuzzy Bottom. Uh, fuzzy Butt, technically. I'm sorry. Oh, fuzzy Butt. Sorry. I'm thinking of Skinny Bottom. Yes. Um, <laughs> Captain Fuzzy Butt, I need to... I don't have a lot of time. Um, I'm supposed to meet up with, with some people. Hopefully get some some money. Um, Aye, money. My best offer is 3500 for this fine vessel of yours. You're telling me 3500 gold for this vessel. Sorry, thirty-five thousand. Uh, <laughs> yes, thirty-five thousand. Fine ship. That's how much I paid for my ship, and it was roughly the same size. You know, ships lose value once they're off the lot. Um, I hate that it be so. I suggest you roll persuasion to see if you are a persuasive individual. All right. I that that seems decent. I could probably part with it for forty thousand or forty thousand. Wait, what? I so thought thirty-five. 30, Why did it go out? <laughs> go up. The least I could, the least I could do, the lowest I could go is forty thousand. That's great, coming down from a hundred and ten thousand. <laughs> That's a lot of percents off. I'm not a math man, but just remember, okay. Jesse. He needs to sell it. It's probably the final amount of money that he needs in order to purchase that manor that he wants in the city. That a guy? <laughs> I'm just saying. Aurora suddenly has a bright <gasps> idea. <laughs> Real estate. Manifests into her mind. Um, 
Mr. Uh, C Captain Fuzzy Butt, you were telling me about that that fine manor that you were going to retire to. Ah, uh, it's delightful. Up on a hill, it has a great view of the ocean, sunrises and sunsets. Yes, yes. I'm solarium. sure you're so excited. Yep. Okay. Nice. I'm sure you're so excited to go there. <laughs> how much? Uh, how much money did you have left? On the, the, the down payment or the payment for it? Why well, I happen to need 40,000 gold to pay for it. To finish paying for it. Interesting. Hence the ship for 40,000. I wonder how much money he would need after that one last run that he's doing. And uh, fine, sir. That uh, <laughs> that's what you're about to do. Is there, is there a ghost here? God, is that you? I hear a voice. <laughs> it is me. I'm feeling enlightened at the moment. Um, so. how, much, how much money are you are you expecting to to get from that last run? Hi, this last run should cover me debt with the Luftians. Oh, you're in debt right now. I I had a run go poorly. Hmm. So you would not be making any money from that, other than. I might make a few um, gold so here or there to cover some extra expenses, but. I fear how many more runs it would take to get me that 40,000 gold. Yes, and, and how many other... Have you had anybody else look at this ship? Am I the first one? Ye be the first. I'm a surprised you came down here, to be honest. I only mentioned it in passing to the harbor master yesterday. Hmm. So demand seems low, I take it. I mean, it's only been a day in the world. Hmm? How about... Oh. Isn't this the busiest port in the world, though? Nay. This be the busiest port in, in Sudnal, but there be a lot of ship-selling business down at the the actual ship-making docks in... Uh, oh my gosh. Rivermaw. Uh, this is just a curious question. Is there, by chance, a lone rowboat just tied off somewhere. There it is. Crawling into the robot? <laughs> no. It, uh, <laughs> it, uh, I think the rowboat in question actually floated down to River Maw. No! <laughs> yeah, it's different river system, but the, the river boat in question would have flown down to, or floated down to River Maw. Damn. Dory, next this quarter you'll get a chance to go there, maybe. Nope. No, does does the ship come with the crew? Asked God through the cleric. That's already been discussed. Oh, yes. Mr. Meta. I I clearly don't remember things. Brain traumatic injury. I last. What what say ye? Yes, I have um twenty five hundred gold. I would like to put a down payment on it. If you can promise me a couple more days, I'll scrounge up the cash. I think I'm going to be the, the first and best suitor um, to offer you for this ship. You know that I come from an experienced past, so I will take care of your ship. Uh, as I said... And all of its Go ahead. hidden cargo. Oh, sorry. And all of its <laughs> hidden cargo. Okay. I, I do love an independent trader. As I said before, I have another run. It will take me a fortnight. If you can come up with the gold in that time, the ship be yours. Perfect. And then I'm gonna raise my normal human hand for a shake. <laughs> he he raises his normal human hand to shake your normal human hand. I'm disappointed you didn't hook him. <laughs> uh, it'd be a deal. I'd be seeing you in a fortnight. Yes, great doing business with you. Best of luck on your your last scavenger. Uh, the pleasure be mine, lass. And might I say, that's a fine tail you got there. Oh, thank you. You have a fine tail there yourself. Uh, and... Stop it, last. You'll make me blush. Oh, well. <laughs> Not <laughs> this kind of... <laughs> 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 walk out. <laughs> she walks out tail wagging. <laughs> <laughs> swish, swish. On my swish. high horse, you could say. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Brandon is internally laughing so hard about that. Perfect dad joke. It's pretty good. I give that a seven to ten. That's yeah, a joke. Over to the college now. All right. Um, 
as you approach the college, you think it might be hard to find your allies in such a large place, but uh, you hear the disruptions and occasional screams from people having their classes burst into in one of the towers uh, off of the courtyard. You're approached by another individual in white robes. Ah, good day. Welcome to the Lyceum Quadrigeminal. What can we do for you? Yes, I am looking for my companions, you could say. Partners in crime. Um, you probably have ran into them. They're quite disruptive. Mm, yes, they went them? that way. Perfect, thank Just you. Just follow the stairs to the top. Once you reach the 18th floor, please take a left. It'll be the third door on the right, the dean's office. Righto, thank you. Indeed. And I'm going to head that way. <laughs> All right. Uh, and as you start climbing the stairs, you do indeed see just this this trail of people peeking their heads out of doors, trying to figure out what was going on. As some flash came through, busting open doors and continuing to run around, sniffing. Now it's one solid big sniff oh. each time. Just uh... Got it. Like his ears have to feel like they've been compressed, and then he sprints off. Understood. People are very confused in discussing this case. Um, you know, you have a pretty good idea of what's going on as you climb to the top of the stairs and you hear someone pounding on a door. Regal. <laughs> Let me in, Dean. <clears throat> Is the door going to... I just want to try and open the door instead of pounding no, on it. No, door opens. Oh, okay. Regal just walks in. You walk in, you see, uh, it looks like a reception area. There's a woman sitting behind a desk. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you... Did you have an appointment with the Dean, Mr... He owes me money. The Dean owes you money. Well, I think the small little man who works for your man owes me money. Oh, and you're I'm gonna the, get my money. You're the ruffians Guab and Shorts hired without authorization. Ruffians? Regal's hand begins to glow. <laughs> Sir, if you would please have a seat. The Dean is currently having a frank discussion with the professor it should only be another minute or two frank i know a guy named that guess what and he just walks by he's going straight into the dean's office he gives zero fucks the door's locked okay well i'm gonna give it a solid uh attempt at a picaronis real quick You're just gonna pick the lock with the <laughs> with the receptionist standing right there I mean, I only need one hand to do that. The other one's ready to burn her entire face off. What? Why are you so damn aggressive, man? I don't know. Why can't you wait three minutes for the professor to be done talking with the dean? As the, I know the professor's not going to give me the gold that I want. Jordan. The best way to prove you're not a ruffian, ruffian is to threaten everyone that you're not a ruffian. Coming from the man <laughs> who literally is just trying to get bigger and is scaring people by the sheer amount of protein. Still not a ruffian. <laughs> not a ruffian. I don't know. Either way. I'm um, trying to get in there. The lock does not spring. You can try it again if you'd like. Is it a metal lock? It is a metal lock, yes. Ah, you know it's really good with metal? Burning hands. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn the fucking door. You do realize that's a cone, right? That's not a touch spell. It's a cone of fire. Well, I guess, I mean, you can decide. Would a Radiant Sunbolt melt it enough? Uh, potentially. I mean, you can try whatever you want, man. All right, I'm going to Radiant Sunbolt the lock. Of course you are. Uh, you strike the lock, and it, it uh, blows a hole through the door as the receptionist starts screaming and wailing for security. Shush. And he pushes the door open. Robin Schwartz. I did not plan enough guards for this encounter. You don't need guards. I'm not going to kill anybody. Well, you've just committed... I mean, you've, you've, you're doing a B and e basically. You just broke down the door. You shoved past the woman who's supposed to stop him. You've caused property damage, and now you're trespassing. Hey, it's a public place. No. No, it's not. It's definitely a private institution. Mm, that's weird. Sounded like everyone came here to do things. Either way... Uh, is the dean there with Guabin Schwartzies? Yes, you do see Guabin Schwartz sitting on a chair with his back to you and uh, across the desk from him. You see um, a very regal-looking man, <coughs> um, long black hair tied in a, in a pony. Um, in, a, in, a what? 
in a pony, ponytail. Okay. A pony. Uh, piercing violet eyes. Um, the man looks like he couldn't be more than 30, but the voice, his voice is rich and deep with, with experience. Um, and he, without even, without even stopping, uh, breaking a sweat, he gives you a, a weight finger and continues to talk with Guavin Shorts. And Pickle you, will actually wait. And you thought this was a good idea without consulting us first. You do realize that your tenure is at stake and that you don't have any approved research grants and you told them you would fund them to find a book. This book. Excuse me, sir. I will be with you in just a moment. I have to deal with this idiot. That's fine, but I do have a question for you before you get back to that, because he's too dumb to answer it. And you seem intelligent, sound intelligent at least. Is this going somewhere? Are you going to entertain the question? Liz? I obviously am waiting. Okay. Do you know what this is? And he pulls out the file with the shining red thing. He'll hand it over to this guy. He seems smart. Smarter than Guavin Shorts, at least. Hmm. I'm not familiar with this. There are a few of our enchanters that might know. This honestly looks like it falls into Guavin Shorts' realm of research. Well, that is That's truly unfortunate. unfortunate. Yes. He does not know what it is. We found it next to the corpse of his understudy, who was, I don't know if Guamish first told you, completely sucked dry, like a dried piece of meat. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Dean Gate. This, this is one of the soul stones. You didn't know what it was earlier, Guamish. I had the night to read. That's concerning. You hired him? Uh, he's he's actually very good at what he does. He's intelligent. He just has no common sense whatsoever. I'll take your word for it. Uh, we found this book. I don't know if that means anything for you, Dean. It starts rifling through it. It's, it's this gobbledygook to me. Hands it back to Guavin Shorts. What... How much did you promise these people? Uh, I promised them 200 gold apiece. It helps one of them died. One Two of them's dead one. and the other betrayed us. You got people killed. Do you understand the liability there? Uh, do, do any of these things go through your head? Guava shorts, I need... Joffrey, please. Please, do not do anything without talking to me or Kirkorn. Please. All right. Go sit in the lobby. In the waiting area, pardon me. Sir, please come in. Um, I did not catch your name. He Regal. stands to shake your hand. Yeah, he extends <laughs> it, not burning. He says, Regal Tetheala. And your short-bearded companion. Ah, this is uh, Horchata Skinnybottom. And is hey. that is that horse woman with you? Really I apologize. Uh, that is such a derogatory term. Centaurette. Uh, yeah, actually. Hey, hi, Aurora. That's Aurora. I don't know where she came from. Mm, please come in. There's space for all of you. Oh, dear. I did not see the the uh, satyr hiding in the shadows there. Please come in as well. <laughs> That's Endra. Indeed. Well, I have chairs for all of you. He told me there were five. We, I think our other companion uh, is meeting a oddly named individual by the name of Hulk Bipley. Ah, Hulk Bipley. My counterpart over at the College of Bulk. Yes, they will get along quite well. His name is Bulk Ripley. Oh, indeed. Well, the College Marshal is... Well, we just don't associate with them much there. Not quite uh, intellectual caliber. <clears throat> Fair enough. Uh, so, Guavin Schwartz was crying the entire time uh, when we were in that lovely catacomb, by the way. But uh, 
perhaps you know something of this. The rogue who turned against us seemed to have some arcanic abilities and was spouting off something about his master by the name of Natuk, who I thought was dead. Natuk. Well, there's never been confirmation that Natuk was killed. Uh, it was just always assumed. No one could gain access to his his uh, sanctum after he retreated. That's actually Guabin Shorts' main field of study. He kept on mentioning something about an index cipher thing and uh yes he believes that with his he's found the way to crack the secret language of natuk and his lieutenants the trio is this something that the college would be interested in funding well if if it can be proven that his codex works then it would bring in a lot of funding from the crown, actually, because they are always interested in things of this nature. I'm That's hearing that Aurora kind of leans in a little bit. In gold? <laughs> yeah, go <Okay>. on. <laughs> oh, um, behave. Oh, God. Uh, well, Guabba Schwartz seems confident that with this book, he can figure out something. Uh... Again, I'm not really sure where this stone came from, but I guess he had sent his understudy into the catacombs. And there was a lot of things happening in those catacombs. Lots yes. of creatures. I, lots I of must ghosts. apologize for that. He never should have cons tried to persuade you to go with him without consulting us first. Uh, you have my heartfelt apologies for the loss of your comrade. Um, we will, of course, yeah. compensate you for your work. And we would be willing to extend compensation a little bit more if you are willing to sign non-disclosure agreements and not hold us responsible for the death of your companion. How much would that extension of compensation go past the already uh, guaranteed 200 gold per individual, minus the dead person and the one that ran? Of course, I could... He shuffles some papers around. I believe we could afford to part with a thousand gold for each of you. I think that's more than fair. I'll sign it. Okay. He uh, gestures, and a quill just flies off the desk and starts scribbling uh, on its own, of its own accord, starts scribbling out on a parchment different non disclosure agreements and non liability agreements. Um, and as they're, they're uh, scribbling away, he continues to speak with you. I actually received word today that uh, an emissary from the Crown would be arriving to discuss, well, Guabin Schwartz, strange enough. Um, hmm. If, in fact, his research is worthwhile, I'm sure that they might be willing to pay you uh, to continue that research. Certainly. Is that covered within the NDA that we're allowed to speak to the crown? Of course. The crown supersedes all things. Okay. Uh, would you mind if I hold on to this soul stone thing? I have no need of it. You right. found it. It is all yours. So, uh, Rio's just going to put that back in a nice little secret area on his persons and... I guess whatever you want, Dean. Uh, if you think Guavin Shorts is worthy of this, and the Crown is interested, uh, well, he may be, be he may be a coward and kind of foolish, but he's produced great work, and his students always. Well, he's a great teacher. If if his codex works, then it will make us a lot of money. To be frank, oh, huh. you, you do know that he was romantically involved with the one that was killed, right? There have been rumors. Oh, yeah, no. He confirmed it. This is troubling. Indeed. We might have to remove him from the teaching roster for a while. Might, might be a good idea. It was a little awkward. Well, <clears throat> uh, I know that the professor had wanted to speak with you. Um, when the emissary arrives, I will send him down to Guavin Schwartz's office. Lovely. Um, how much does uh, a lock replacement cost on a door in a these towers uh 
please, this time don't worry about it, but in the future, please make an appointment with Meredith up front. Noted. I need to talk to Meredith real quick. Rico's just going to go out and say, sorry. <laughs> she, she looks very pale and frightened. Uh, yeah, go talk to Bob and Schwartz, I guess. <laughs> well, she, do one second, just one second. Aurora, um, he looks at you and says, uh, would you, you look like a trustworthy sort. Uh, would you be willing to take this money and give it to the other companion? The big man? That's what Guab and Schwartz kept calling him. The big man. He, he is quite big, but when I stand on my hind legs, I think I'm bigger, and I'll take the Take it all. Mm, thank you. Yes. Is two thousand? Is mine in bulk? Yes. You you were carrying two thousand gold, a pouch for you and a pouch for bulk, if you choose to give it to him. Am I the only one that heard this conversation? Uh, Endra was in there too, but you know how she is. <laughs> okay, and the bulk is in a completely different. Room bulk right is now. in a different tower. <laughs> yeah, he's in a different land right now. Okay, noted. Speaking well, of bulk. Uh, I'll have a thousand gold for uh, Endra. Thanks. Bulk, you uh, bust into... Well, you tell me what you're doing. <laughs> I'm just searching for Hulk. I'm asking, where's Hulk? Hulk where's Bipley. The Hulk? <laughs> the Hulk. Hulk Bipley. <clears throat> Hulk Bipley's office is just down the hall. Double doors. Can't miss it, dude. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get my best, strongest <laughs> knock. Louder than that, but yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, who is it, brother? Oh, no. It... <laughs> it's Bulk Ripley. <laughs> Bulk Ripley, never heard of you. Come on in, brother. I walk in. <laughs> he just looks at you. What can I do for you? What is it? Who do I see? Uh... <laughs> you see fucking Hulk Ripley. That's who. Uh, it looks a bit like uh, a man that's last name rhymes with Rogan. Ye old Hulk Hogan. Brother. Is it He's a wearing a yellow uh, spandex leotard Whoa. with some hot, sh hot pants on. Um, he's got long br bl uh, blonde hair. Uh, very bandana. beat up face. Red bandana, right? Um, he looks um, at you he's like, hey brother, what can I do for you? Is he a human or? Oh, he's human. Okay. Just a, a giant to... human. I've come to test out. Test out. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I got to pull open the uh, actual stuff. As he's doing me. that, Macho Man Randy Savage walks in. <laughs> I was going to try this Randy Savage voice, but I realized there's no way I can pull it off. Oh, yeah. It's about to get real. Let me snap into a Slim Jim. Kim Jong Il. Uh, oh well, I don't know where that note is, and it doesn't really matter. We're fine. Where's Ric Flair? <laughs> All right. Well, it depends what you want to do, brother. Are you trying to teach, or are you just trying to get certified? Both. That was, that was Both? a mix of the pirate. Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. All cool. right. Well, you have to <laughs> it's a pirate now. Thanks. <laughs> well, brother, you gotta you gotta prove yourself in different feats. Bring it on. All right. We can set up the test for tomorrow. I don't know oh. if you're ready for him. How about this right now? Like, give me a taste of the test. <laughs> All right. Boys, bring it in. And they, uh, they have eight different uh, half-orcs drag in a, um, a cart with no wheels. And the cart is fully laden with barrels and sacks of grain and all sorts of other stuff. It's like, one of the tests we give, brother, is that you have to be able to lift this over your head. Three reps. Okay. Pew, 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 pew. Da, 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 da. Oh God! You complete two reps. <laughs> On the third rep, you you're uh, you or do your... I? Oh my! No, you did not just use your inspiration. <laughs> did you burn your? Inspiration? Uh, I did. 
you complete two reps with great form. On the third one, you struggle and you barely get it up to about chin level before it drops. <laughs> Brother, well, maybe you should come back. Give it a few days. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'll go again. <laughs> I'm bulking. I'm a busy man. I didn't get a warm up. Fair enough. What's your pre workout look like? Put 10 eggs. That's a good one. No. <laughs> uh, you, oh, wait, that's a net. But the what? first two were not. He did a 12 and a 13. Oh. <laughs> with, with plus eight, by the way. His modifier is plus eight. <laughs> he rolled a 12 and a 13. That's just some straight shit rolls there. Uh, oh. Go take the night. <laughs> On the last one, did I tip it over or something? Like <laughs> on the last one, you, no, you, you threw it. You like you lift it, and you're just so excited. You just throw it straight up, and it bounces off the, the <laughs> ceiling and comes crashing back down to the ground. He seems impressed, but you weren't able to do three reps in sequence for him. So I'll be back. <laughs> I saw this I'll be waiting for you. Man competition. All right, that's the bulk zone. I'm so excited. No one's ever tried to pursue these steps at the college before. <laughs> and In so and out, usually. Usually, usually, I like have a whole tier of like side quests that people can use to rise through the ranks. But the fact that you just want to test out, I'm just going to throw some crazy crap at you. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to rise to the top. I'm going to be the very best. No one ever was. Dun, 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 dun. Do we run into bulk on our way out? Um. Well, you were headed out. I don't know what Aurora was doing. Was she headed out as well? Yeah, I'm heading out with them. Wait, since Bulk wasn't there to sign the disclosure agreement, Ooh, did he not sign point. it, or did we sign for him? He did not sign it yet, uh, and he uh, it was suggested that he be sent up there to sign for it if he wants to pay, which he did not give to you then. So, yeah, he would not have given you that mm -hmm. thousand gold. Mm -hmm. you, you definitely <laughs> no, did. He definitely gave you the no. thousand gold. You did. So, he, he okay. on your honor, he asked you to send Bulk up there to sign the non the NDA. <clears throat> Sorry, okay. Jesse. I know, and he's going to know if I don't tell him. So, now I have to give it. Now I have to tell him. Okay. You could just lie to Bulk and tell him that it's only, like, 500 gold. I don't That's think the true. NDA specifies the, the shush money. Nope. You remember back to the NDA, you don't see you didn't see any monetary amount on it. It just said uh, specified that this would be in uh, in exchange for quote compensation. <laughs> There's just like you motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm no fine man. with it. <laughs> um Bulk is just real disappointed in himself right now. He's in his own head and he's sweating a lot. <laughs> Yeah, Bulk just seems like he's more along for the ride rather than wants the money, so Aurora doesn't feel bad. Oh, Bulk <laughs> wants the money. It takes a lot to start oh. up a, your own oh. uh, exercise routine. But... Aurora didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have we run into Bulk yet? Yes, you guys all oh, meet no. down in the oh. courtyard. Okay, hey Bulk, Bulk is... big man, come here. Um, yeah. You're going to have to run all the way up to the Dean's office. I think is it's like the, the top office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try to do it as fast <laughs> as you can. Um, you're going to have to sign a non-disclosure agreement for... What went down at the uh, the uh, catacombs? A what? A non-disclosure agreement. It's it's basically you sign it. You, you can't. Uh, the, the college doesn't have liability for for what happened to us. And we can't talk okay. about it. Okay. Yeah, they they just need your your signature. Why don't you talk about it? Um. Well, one of uh, our companions died, so they probably don't want that. Was he there. really our companion, though? We knew him for, like, 30 minutes. Don't let them know that. <clears throat> yeah, they don't need to know that. Anyways, you just, you just need to sign the thing. Um, how, how much How much is your uh, favorite protein powder that you like to like, or, or you like to eat, or what's your... Well, chickens are expensive. Chickens, chickens are yeah. expensive. Yeah, how much would you say? How, how much is a chicken? Yeah, how a whole much chicken, does a chicken cost? Maybe a silver a piece. It's not very much, but I eat a lot of them. Okay, well, you're in luck because um, compensation, it was uh, 50 gold to sign that paper. So that just think how like many chickens you can. Huh? I found 50 gold on a dead person in there. <laughs> <laughs> they were rich merchants, though. You know, the college, they don't have a lot of money. All their funds Oh, that's not going to do. I'm going to, I'm talking to them. Well, I 
trying to. I've already tried to persuade him. I don't think you're gonna. So yeah, but you're you're tiny. I'm though. big. Oh, she's oh, a, horse. Time, a whole horse. He's taller than you, little man. <laughs> not. Pretty sure she is. I don't know how tall is a horse. I don't know, but I'm 28, 2800 pounds. She's at least ten hands. No, I'm eighteen hundred pounds. <laughs> a horse is like at max six feet tall. I'm eight feet tall, so I'm like. Um, there are some horses that are larger than that. There are yeah, some big like horses some out eight there, man. To Twelve feet. Horses. And the tall part of her is human. Or the short part of the tall part of the horse is the human part. So it's like. I mean, I have the legs and like the, tall the part torso. Of the horse is or no, the rest of it. it she's tall. Yeah, like, like, instead of a neck and a head, I'm a whole torso and a head, so I feel like... I'll sort this out. I'll get us some no, more no, money. Okay. 50 is not enough. <laughs> oh, no, really, it's okay, Mook. We I'm going to... another stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get to the top, and you see this this frazzled woman, uh, frazzled looking woman sitting behind the desk of the Dean's uh, reception area. Just, she looks like she's just barely getting herself back into sorts, as if she's been very disturbed in the past few minutes. Jordan, are you smoking? No. Don't judge me! Shut the fuck up and go! Jordan. Anyway. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do, do you have an appointment with the dean? Uh, I gotta sign something, but also I need to talk to somebody about money. Oh! You need to sign the non disclosure Oh, oh, oh and she visibly relaxes and slides a form over um and an ink uh, pot quill. Uh this is where you signed. They already gave your companions the money. Yeah, so it sounds like they said it was fifty gold. That's not nearly so enough. I'm here 50, to get more. Fifty as in five zero? Yes. Well, uh, they they must have misspoken. Five hundred chickens. They, they must have misspoken. Chickens. Um the dean gave them a thousand gold apiece. Like total? No, no, no. For each individual. Like, so, a hundred thousand chickens? Roughly, depending on the market rate. That's a lot of fucking chickens. That's a lot of chickens. Uh, wh what happens if I sign this? Basically, we you agree to take compensation and not discuss what happened in the catacombs with anybody outside of the people who were there. Or members of the royal party, and you don't uh, hold the college liable for any injuries that you or anybody you know attained while doing while working with Professor Guapman Schwartz. So I can't literally ever like brag about the fact that I just punched a ghost. You can say you punched a ghost. You just can't say that you were in the catacombs working with a representative of the Lyceum Quadrigeminal and punched a ghost. So I can say this all happened somewhere else, and have the exact same story. You do you, boo boo. Perfect. That works. <laughs> <laughs> so, why do I only have fifty gold? You you should have had a thousand gold. They gave me fifty. I would take that up with your party members. Party member. Your companions. It's not companions. hidden here, right? No, no. I, I I personally watched the dean hand over a thousand gold to, to each. And he gave one of them two pouches. I don't remember which one, though. Okay, like the other tower, I was lifting things. I don't have to lift something here to get what I the gold. All you have to lift is this quill. I knew it. Uh, okay. Also, how does she not remember that the horse is the one that got two <laughs> giant fucking gold pouches? Maybe she's just on. trying to not get too into it. <laughs> um. Yeah, so both will sign. Terrific. She, uh... Thanks you for your sloppy signature. What's your signature look like? Is it like sloppy? Is it immaculate? Like, uh, <laughs> is it a thumbprint? Like, <laughs> you have a muscle. It's bull sound. Just a like bicep. <laughs> it's a stick figure with these bulging arms. <laughs> she she looks at it kind of sideways and says, "Well, thank you, Mr. Ripley." <laughs> I'll make sure this gets filed appropriately. <laughs> but it's not as a stick figure. It's like he signs it in a way that makes like bulk Ripley, but it's the shape of like a muscular man. I like it. <laughs> Calligraphy was bulk Ripley's second passion. <laughs> uh, Hunter, did you add the 43 gold? I did. I okay. Yeah. Just Thank making you. sure. So now, were you guys leaving or were you guys going to Guavi's office? Uh, I think we were probably gonna we headed down to find Bulk and then headed towards 
Squabby's office afterwards. Okay. Uh, we'll assume that you guys met well, up. Bulk's gonna run. Bulk's gonna run back down. Bulk is just—he's getting his cardio in today. Doing sprints. In, you gotta do stair workouts. It's a little plyometric, you know. As you're as you're running down the stairs, you see several familiar faces walking back up the stairs, uh, following a, an individual um, in uh, black and purple robes who looks very frustrated to be chauffeuring people or walking people around. Um, and he keeps saying that he doesn't care about anything. Uh, how's it going, Crackhorn? Uh, so, people, we have an issue. It's <laughs> Crackhorn, thank you. Uh, yeah, like the feet of chickens. Uh, the 50 gold. Someone lied. I'm going to say it's probably the horsewoman, but I don't want to point any fingers or hooves. <laughs> Don't uh, have any uh, how many gold? How much gold did you get there, uh, shooty fist guy? Uh, I was given a thousand. Okay. Andrew lifts yes. up a pouch with a thousand gold. Andrew, a thousand. Horchata just kind of lets down his sleeve, and there's literally just gold, and he's like a thousand. Just, just floating in there. Yeah, just it's like a weird space conundrum, just like, Ooh. and then he hides uh, it back. Uh, horsewoman, how much? How much did you get? Yeah, I got a thousand for me and a thousand for you. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll so, hand it over. Yeah. Honestly, I thought you were just here to, to punch Eat ghosts and, and punch have things. fun. And personally, I feel like I really need the money, but um, yeah. What do you need uh, the money for? Well, um, I don't know. I don't know what y'all were up to after we spent that glorious night in the end, but I was over at the uh, the docks. Looking for a schooner. <laughs> Glorious. It was a I nice mean, night at the end, right? Bulk, bulk ate two chickens. It was interesting. Bones and all. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a good night's sleep after spending a whole day fighting things in the. Uh... I bet you never get to stay in the house instead of the barn. Uh, so, what do you need? Why? Why did you try to steal Bulk's gold? Or sorry, pilfer? I don't know. Well, I. Bulk would call it stealing. Like um, I, I was just gonna hold on to it, take care of it. Um, you try to give steal it to you after nine ninety thousand five hundred chickens from me, and I'm giving it all back to you. See, no harm done. Honestly, I'm trying to buy a ship. I I had a wonderful ship a that brought me a, a schooner, to be to be specific. I thought y'all knew that I was a captain, but maybe well, the horse thing failed. assumed that. that people, was people wouldn't assume that a horse is a is a captain. It's true. Um, I'm a trailblazer, one could say, for the centaurs. Where's your hat with a feather? It's in my satchel. Oh, okay. So, how much gold yeah. do you need for this? So, I, I actually need thirty-five thousand. Um, oh. That's a lot of gold. <laughs> Quite a hefty, hefty amount. Um, we're not faring too well, as I thought, doing this for Guavin shorts. Well, I think it might have been before you came in, but evidently the crown has a particular fascination with um, things that do of this nature. I'm assuming it has something to do with life and death, like living past death. And for some reason they like that, but... Uh, the dean up there indicated that there might be some substantial funding that would come forth if we were to uh, be able to have Guavin Schwartz prove that he can figure out this book that he now has in his hand somewhere because he ran away once the dean handed it to him. Well, I am in need of sus substantial funding, so I'm along for the ride. I'm sorry about that, Bulk. Hope no hard feelings. A few hard feelings. About 950 of them, but, you know. You can buy all the chickens you want now. <laughs> the dream of my chicken farm. I thought you could get enough with 50 gold. I, Sorry. Yeah. You realize we found 50 on, on the bodies there. Fuck. That, that's the change they throw at their dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, let's go find Guam and Schwartz. And that we'll, sounds we'll like a grand later. idea. Well, this is all terrific and wonderful. I really don't care about your petty squabbles. Could we please get on with this so I can get back to my work? 
yeah, if you'd actually move at a pace that's comparable to getting to the location. Well, Jimmy if you weren't corn. all fighting about money. Peasants. Money. Peasants. Do you have a lot of money? I have enough to be comfortable. I am on yeah. tenure after all. Do you have 35,000 gold? <laughs> Not liquid, no. Peasant. And Regal just keeps walking towards where he thinks Squab and Schwartz is. He's not really sure, but he's just going to go. Roll a nature check. Oh, shit. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> yeah, I ain't got no fucking proficiencies on that. <laughs> uh, you end up in the right hallway. <laughs> I'm going to just start walking real slowly. <laughs> uh, they catch up, and you hear a door open behind you and to your left. When you turn around, you see that uh, Krikorn has opened the door and gestured you into uh, an office. Thanks, Krikorn. Mm, yes. Thanks again, Krikorn. Uh, so irritating. Regal's going to flick him on the forehead. <laughs> As you guys walk in, uh, you see uh, it's a very large office. Uh, you wouldn't expect someone as goofy as Guavin Shorts to have such a, a wide space for his studies. It has It's lined with tables um, covered in different bits of parchment and stacks of books that are kind of teetering. Uh, there's a random odd plate uh, and scraps of food kind of strewn throughout the room. Lining all the walls of the room are just shelves and shelves of book, reaching all the way from the floor to the top or to the ceiling at about 20 feet. <coughs> Uh, there's a desk back against the window on the other side of the room um, with uh, just it's just covered mounds of paper uh, a couple of knocked over ink wells old quills um, and you see professor Bob and shorts frantically uh, reading a book and scratching things down on a, a piece of parchment with his back to you Guabi. oh oh, oh. Oh dear, you startled me. Yes, startled. <laughs> come quick. Uh, I've I've had a breakthrough. Come. <laughs> yes. Oh, quick. I need help. I have a test tomorrow. I need your help. Oh, a test. I do love tests. <laughs> what kind of test? Is it physics? Is it mathematics? How about lifting literature? Things. Lifting things. Oh dear. I guess that's a sort of physics. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> what help could I offer you, big man? <laughs> How do I best lift? I, I'm sorry, come again? How do I best lift? Uh, well, one would typically activate muscles in the in the torso, arms, and legs and cause them to tighten in an effort to lift things, yes. I think do he's I asking you if you have something to help him lift. Do I jerk or do I pull? Oh, never, never jerking, never twisting. No, no. I'll stop jerking. Steady and um. strong. I could show you on some of our anatomical models, yes. That'd be great. And he, he runs over and pulls out a mannequin, a fully articulating mannequin. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is not quite to the same <laughs> scale that you are. This is of the average human male, but mm, it should suffice. Interesting. Uh. And he starts to go into this like lecture about uh, biomechanical oh, movement God. and the biophysics involved in... Uh, kinesiology. Bulk is taking notes. Terrific. Go ahead and uh, you know, how long are you going to spend listening to him? God damn until, it. He, until he stops. <laughs> All right, after, as long as he's talking about muscles. After about an hour and a half, he wraps up and you feel uh, like for the next maybe 48 hours, you're a little bit stronger. Cool. Did you just give him a plus one bonus? <laughs> a 48 hour plus one bonus of strength. Motherfucker. He doesn't need that. <laughs> He's already huge. Well, Aren't you already at 20? Yeah. Can he be at 21? There, I, I am giving him a special dispensation. Oh, since, since he actually sat there and listened to Guavin Shorts for an hour and a half. <laughs> yes, you get a plus one to your strength bonus for 48 hours. Wow. Awesome. 48 uh, in-game hours, not like... <laughs> you have until the session's done. Well, you have 18 I mean, minutes. It depends, it depends if we... You'll probably have it next session. Got it. So how long do you need, Guavin Schwartz? How long do I need for what? The lecture's done. 
No, the book. You have oh. the book. Oh, indeed. Hmm. Come quick. This is delightful. I've, hmm. I've made a breakthrough. And he waves you over. And in front of him, he has the red book that had the language that was unreadable. He has his black uh, book of notes to the left. And you see on the right, he's actually writing in common. And it makes sense what he's writing. It, it's kind of difficult because it's his shorthand, so you can't read everything, but they're actual words. He says, this, <laughs> this, this is it. I have, I have figured it out. And at that exact moment, you hear a knock in the door. Is it a familiar knock? It's a firm knock. And that's where we're going to leave it tonight. Cause... Can I ask Guapin Schwartz a question? Of course you can. Since we still have 17 minutes. <clears throat> Indeed. Are you expecting somebody? Mm, the Dean did say something about mm, sending the representative of the Crown down here to mm, look at my research. Guess it has been a few hours. Indeed. I'm just wary that Rogue is still alive. Oh, not him, please. Mm, I don't want to meet mm, him again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's there? So, oh, Bobby. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Oh, so Guava, you mentioned macros, rest days, and something called sumos. What are sumos? And how do I mention macros? Macros? <laughs> yes, macros. Oh, well, there's an entire study of mm, nutrition. The macros are going to be fantastic. We want to make sure you have chicken a well- Chicken part of that? Mm, chicken will give you lots of protein and some of the mm, different aminos that you need, absolutely. Uh, but you also need to make sure you're getting um, carbohydrates, yes, for energy. You've got to, have the, got to have the carbs. I would recommend mm, carbo-loading. No, no eggs or protein. Carbohydrates would be things like grains and breads yes and fruits i i recommend carbo loading 48 hours to 24 hours before any athletic event it will give you more mm. energy do you have any bread in this room i i, I this might be a scrap somewhere yes i'm gonna search for bread oh my god please <laughs> give me an investigation check <laughs> fuck Went from eating entire chickens to, like, the smallest amount of grain that he can find. Oh, God. You find two scraps of half-eaten bread. Oh, Bulk eats it. No. It is stale and tastes slightly moldy. There's no con safe here? <laughs> Not yet. Well, while, while Bulk does that, I ask, who's there at the door? And the door just swings open. And do you see three people? You see... Oh, you know, I think I actually have the... Oh, God. Hold Please on. don't do the mummy. Don't no, no. do the mummy. Here. Oh, that was really quiet. I heard it, though. There you go. Yeah, the door creaking open. There you go. <clears throat> um, you see three people. A shorter... Um, man, uh, balding a little bit, um, features that really wouldn't strike you as anything special, a little bit round, I wouldn't say quite paunchy, but he's got a little bit of a tummy, um, dressed in uh, all black from head to toe with a riding cloak up, up over his head. So you wouldn't know that he's balding. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, walks in with a, uh, a satchel and a uh, rapier on his hip. He's flanked by two uh, very tall, strong-looking men uh, in chain mail and um, uh, blue tunic tops uh, covering them that bear the seal of House Udek. You er must be the royal party. <clears throat> Yes, indeed. My name is Golgi. Aparatus Golgi. I represent the prince, and I'm here to speak with one Professor Schwartz. That's him. Mm. And Regal just points right to the spastic-looking man. And since we're close on time, and I don't want to go over critical plot points twice, I think that's where we're going to call it. That way, when everyone's here tomorrow, they can, or next week, they can get it on the plot <gasps> ba, ba, ba. congratulations uh you have 
done things. And I almost lifted. Leveled up. You leveled up. You found a way to get a ship. Uh, maybe. Just. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so, remember this: the quickest way from point A to point B isn't always necessarily a straight line. There are so, other ways you could maybe maybe barter for the ship. So I'll just leave it there. Okay. I'm going to think about it this week. <laughs> I'm Not like that, Jordan. You freaking perv. <laughs> I mean, he did say something about her tail at the end. There, that's, so that's why my brain went to that. That's and I was true. Like, mm, but I don't just, know if think about, <laughs> just think about what his end goals are. Okay. You should burn down his mansion that he wants to buy. <laughs> no, I don't want to go to Earth. Not what I was recommending. <laughs> no spells, though. I'm going to... I'm going to figure out a more persuasive argument for this okay. ship. Sure. Uh, there's that, or just consider who you're going to be talking to and who they said they represent. That's all I'm saying. The crown? <clears throat> you can convince the crown <clears throat> to pay it for it. <clears throat> I'm going to convince the crown to start a fitness initiative. No, oh, no. Like. <laughs> anyway, with that okay. being said, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. But also, a big thanks to Roll20 for the uh, virtual tabletop that sometimes works and sometimes is quite frustrating. To D&D Beyond for the character sheets, rule books, and other things that we get to use. Uh, a big thanks to Sirenscape because their sound sets are pretty awesome. If you want to use the sound set that we're listening to right now, it's called Bustling Port Town. You can have you can have the sounds of a main street, the shipyards, or a busy marketplace only on Sirenscape. And then, of course, a big thanks to Twitch, to YouTube, to the University of Washington, and to the VA. And the final one out to you guys, our viewers, who several of you actually stayed with us through half of this boring episode, but now it's down to no one, because it was not very exciting. But next week will be a different story, so tune in right here. And again, thank you, and enjoy your long rest. Wow.